Started. I call the meeting to order at um, 6.30. Thank you all for coming out on such a cold night. Um, we're going to change the order of the meeting so that we can accommodate the folks who can't talk about the zoning issues. That's okay with everybody that we don't have to sit through the rest of the session unless you really want to. Um, and you're Yes, indeed. Okay, so there are, there are two items of zoning business. One is the zoning bylaw, the second is the zoning violations follow up. And um, I believe that the zoning violations follow up is, hey Mike, how you doing? is the um, main issue of concern to you folks. The zoning violations follow up. Right? Okay, I'm going to read the letter out so that we have it in the um, public record. Then we'll um, ask the zoning administrator what he thinks about it, and then we'll open up for discussion. Okay, fair enough. Okay, this was um, <clears throat> to um, Merle Tessier as the zoning administrator, plus the Board of Selectmen from Ellendale and Peter Lewinthal on January 29th. Letter about zoning violations, Jonathan Sparks, Mark Stevens, Auger Hall Road, South Newfane, Vermont. Based on Newfane zoning bylaw and town plan, setback section 202 and 203, 241.2. Currently, there's a travel trailer and mobile home that have been in place for more than 10 years. There's a travel trailer situated about 15 feet from the edge of the road and less than the required setback of 75 feet. At some point this past year, the original travel trailer was moved out and a large travel trailer moved in. It's almost the length of the mobile home behind it, still without the required setback. Stevens' mobile home was moved into place in early 2000. <clears throat> the Sparks' original travel trailer was grandfathered because it was put in place just before new thing put in zoning in 1970. The current mobile home was not placed on the original footprint mainly because of the previous tenant abandoned it and a major part of the derelict mobile home was still in place. Section 440, Abandonment and Demolition of Structures. One of the reasons for this placement of the current mobile home was that the remains of the previous mobile home were still in place. Parts of the old mobile home were dismantled and hauled away, and parts of it were placed in a dumpster within view of the Darrow dooryard and remained there over the years. Other parts, such as the steel supports, were thrown over the bank near the wetland area close to the road and behind the mobile home. This is a violation of the Newfane Zoning Ordinance. Violations. One, a reduction of setback distance. Two, demolition of a structure or building in whole or in part. Three, adequacy of landscaping, screening, and setbacks in regard to achieving maximum compatibility and protection of adjacent property. Front cars and other vehicles remain in full view of adjacent properties. Four, the plastic structure covered in blue tarp is larger than that allowed by zoning regulations. Five, the building meant for agricultural purposes is being used to repair vehicles without a permit. Six, other sheds and plastic huts are being used for parts storage without permits. Seven, there are more than four cars, trucks, travel trailers, which are in violation of state and town regulations. See Google Maps. Eight. Cars and trucks range from 12 to 20 during the warmer months. No permit is in evidence for a junkyard or storage of a variety of vehicles and parts. There are half in two or three boats and travel trailers ranging from a maximum of four to the three currently on the property. As far as I know, there are no permits in this, uh, there are no permits. In the summer of 2014, a large pile of automotive bodies were piled on the southwest corner of the property close to the Lilienthal land and the Marlboro Branch. Section 480, light and glare and noise. This activity increased over the years. The last two have seen an increase of the repair and storage of vehicles to the point that there have been between 12 and 20 cars, trucks, boats, travel trailers, and other motorized vehicles verified by the 2014 Google Maps. Some of the travel trailers have been on the property more than 180 days allowed in the zoning bylaw. The repair work has been constant, particularly at night and on weekends. There's been much more work done than just for friends, as reported to the zoning administrator. 
This activity has made it impossible for the neighbors to enjoy the outdoors in the late afternoons or evenings in the summer. The noise of engines revving and clanging the metal will often penetrate the neighbors' homes. This noise can be described as chop-chop, grinding, dumping of steel parts of vehicles, revving of engines, smell of paint and other chemicals, and excessive light and other noise when the work is done at night. There's a commercial record parked in the front yard close to the Darrow House and well, and well. And well the Darrow House and well, within 65 feet. A flatbed truck has also been seen by hauling in cars and other vehicles. There is a light currently that shines into the bedrooms of the Darrow House. In the dancers' bedroom facing the road, heavy curtains have been hung in an attempt to mitigate the light, but the halogen or vapor light still penetrates through the edges and the fabric itself. This light is on all night, most nights. The request of the neighbors is either to mitigate the glare or put a shade over the lamp so that it does not cause light pollution to the neighbors. This is in violation of the zoning ordinance. Section 420, change of use. There's been a change of use of the land. Originally, it was a farm with cows and horses. Now, truck, car, and other vehicle repair has been a constant activity for a number of years, increasing more each year without permits and town and state oversights. There have been no provisions approved by the state for the disposal of toxic materials, car parts, garden tractor parts, truck parts, batteries, automobile bodies, and other debris. There's no visible collection of trash from the mobile home. This repair activity has been visible from the dooryard of the Darrow House and from their office, which faces the mobile home. Since 2002, the repair of vehicles such as motorcycles, trucks, cars, and ATVs has drastically altered the character of the neighborhood, which in the town plan is designated as rural residential. This was not occasional. It occurred more than several times a week, often after dark, and increased every weekend for some years now. The neighbors tried to live with it, but it's gotten more and more intrusive and dangerous. There's no screening or protection of sight and sound for adjacent properties. The last two years have seen an, exp an exponential increase of the repair and storage of vehicles to the point it resembles a junkyard. Recently, through Google Maps 2014, between 12 and 20 vehicles were visible all over the property. This summer 2014, the Lilienthal's had an outdoor wedding and were unable to use the land most suitable for the outdoor reception because of the clearly visible debris on the Sparks side of the Sparks Lilienthal boundary. This prevented the Lilienthal's from using their property as they wish. The change of use has impacted the operations of the Lally Farm. Noise, chemical odors, emissions, and smoke impacts the ability for the crew and customers to conduct business. Many groups come to the Lally for garden tours. Garden clubs like to meet here. There's also the public who come to stroll through the gardens to look at the 200,000 blooms that are by day lilies and pick blueberries. The farm has hosted a number of fundraisers for various groups. Valley is a destination for people from all over the U.S. It's been written up in a number of magazines, local, regional, and national. This benefits the economic climate of Newfane because these same people stay in local inns or bed and breakfasts, eat at local restaurants, or shop in local stores. Arger Hall Road is used by many people who come for the Marlboro Music Festival. The idea of a concert here at the gardens would certainly be impossible. The continual repair of vehicles under conduct of operation, i.e., repair of vehicles, has adversely affected the character of the neighborhood and the surrounding area. There are the daily gardens, pick your own blueberries, artists, potters, home for children with disabilities, retired people, and numerous people who use the nice flat surface of the road for walking, biking, birding. During the summer, children walk or bike to allow to pick blueberries. Septic system, section 203. The current septic system and drinking water were not designed, approved, or installed in accordance with Vermont wastewater systems. The Darrow well, which is on the survey map, shows it is 10 feet from the road on the northwest corner of the house. The Class II road adds 50 feet, making a total of 60 feet to the edge of the road. This means that the well is perilously close to the activity that produces a great deal of toxic materials that can eventually pollute the Darrow well. The mobile home's driveway and car storage are also located too close to the Darrow source of drinking water. A portion of the travel trailer is also too close. A commercial rucker is parked on this area also. In conclusion, the site in question is also a detriment to the total character of the village of South Newfane. In the summer, Rock River artists host an open studio weekend which coincides with peak season on Olaly Dailies. 
Comments are often made as to why the town of Newfane allows this junkyard to exist, as well as the house and barn which are falling down in very dangerous condition. Town zoning says an abandoned structure has a limited period of time before demolition. We would like the zoning administrator and the board of selectmen to address these issues, respectively. Respectfully, Ellen G. Darrow and Peter Lilienthal. And a copy of this letter went to Pete Van Loan as chair of the development review board. Okay, um, why don't we hear from the zoning administrator and see if you'd like to add anything from the DLB perspective. Okay, I received this letter on whatever date they said, January 29th. Went through it. And basically, the only thing that I could find that I could enforce was the light and glare. And I talked to Mr. Stevens about it, and he was supposed to take care of it. Unless I get feedback to the contrary, I assume he's taking care of it. Uh, as far as the septic system goes, I have a valid permit in the file, and I don't know. If Mr. Lilienthal may know something I don't know about the installation of the system, but uh, the state of Vermont, as of uh, 2014, said it's a valid permit. So that issue went by the wayside. The junk vehicles, that's not in my jurisdiction. That's the select board issue. And as I understand it, some of the vehicles were there when Mr. Stevens moved in, which makes them the property of Mr. Sparks. So, best approach, I suppose, would contact Mr. Sparks and raise the issue with him. And I'm not sure, have uh, Mrs. Darrow and Mr. Lilienthal tried to talk with their neighbor? Not talk at, but talk with them. Because it seems to me it's a neighborhood dispute and it's been going on for some time. I'll say that. What can I say? Can I comment as, um, as town clerk, when Peter came in to look at, he went into the zoning um, file and found that septic permit. It is not how it has not, however, been submitted to the town for recording, nor have we received um, a report that says that the septic system, it was just a permit to put it in. We have not received anything to say that it was put in correctly. The state letter indicated that unless condition of change, the septic system is adequate. They had a two bedroom permit before and they have a three bedroom permit now. And they have a two bedroom and now it's three bedroom. But again, at least it has it hasn't been filed with the town. That, that, that permit always comes back with um, for for reporting, and they're supposed to bring in the three pages and have it reported. The state is just going on the original permit. We sent a letter to Mr. Stevens indicating that unless he's made changes, <coughs> that there is a, the permit is still valid wasn't a recording because he wasn't applying for a new septic system. That won't happen until he buys the land and puts the house on it that he wants. So if I understand what, what we've been talking about here, there was an original permit that, that approved a septic system for two bedrooms on there. Um, Mr. Stevens is... Can you talk louder? He has yeah. Yes. Hearing. Okay. Um, as I understand it, um, there was a a septic system permit that was issued by the state for a two-bedroom home on the property some time ago. Um, and the, 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 the person who's interested in buying the property or is renting the property at the moment wants to put a three-bedroom structure on there? Is that he says it was two-bedroom. He's saying two. Okay, yeah. so it's still two. Bedroom. I have and, on that word. Now, as far as the repair business... I don't think he's here. Um, but before we go on to the repair business, let's just see. Yes, please. The current septic system and water sources have been used and was in place before the state took over the uh, 
waste and water supply business here in Vermont. That business that the state gets involved is probably not over 15 years old. I mean, I think that's only but his, his seven. septic yeah. system, <coughs> the cesspool that he has, and the water supply have been there when the first trailer was installed, and he just hooked up to that. So that probably has no permit or any information about how many bedrooms or how much the flow must be for the system at all. The, for the current one that's in use, that has been in use for 15, 20 years or longer. Now his new permit, he had an well, engineer put together a survey, a, a map of his proposed locations for new septic systems and also for a new uh, water source. And that is probably the permit that uh, Lori was refer referring to. Mm -hmm. There's probably no permit, no written permit saying, you know, that your septic system is satisfactory or something, because none exists unless this one which we found uh, that the state issued uh, but hasn't been recorded yet, unless that has some validity to it. Uh, okay, let me ask um, the zoning administrator a question because I'm confused now. Merle, you're saying that the state had issued a permit and that the subsequent letter simply said that that original permit was still good unless the, state, the situation changes. The state says unless something has changed, okay. that they don't see any issue here. Okay, so the other, uh, the other but aspect. But Peter is saying that no permit exists, so is he misinformed on that or, or what? It could be that the state is willing to grandfather the thing mm -hmm. that's there now. Right. Okay. And so there wouldn't be a permit. Peter, do you have a copy of the letter that Mo is referring to? Yeah. Have you ever been given that? I have a copy of that letter. You mean the building, the permit? Yeah. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. <clears throat> that's what I'm confused about. One person is saying there's no permit. The other person is saying yeah, there is a permit in a follow-up letter that says the permit's still good unless the situation changes. Well, the state, in fact, didn't take over until 2007. So, so what is the permit the state's referring to? I, it's, a it's an existing sector. It, it, it's a totally different story. Yeah. What we're talking about is the original septic system, which was put in in 1970. That's way before the state had any uh, per, uh, oversight of septic systems. The town wasn't even involved right. in it because we moved to uh, South Newfane in 1964. And... Uh, According to my recollections, and of course I don't have any documentation for this, it was basically a cesspool where rocks were put in. It has failed several times, but they, I don't know, uh, yes, once the Stevens had to redig it out and clean it out, and I don't know what you do, put in more rocks or at least, but uh, there has been a stench from over there when the septic system is not functioning properly, and that think that's why I brought it up. Okay, thank you. Mike, you want to say something? Else? Well, I said, what the problem is, see what they're doing. They are going on the existing, and it hasn't failed to the point where you'd have to replace it. Now, if you want to replace it, you do have a right to maintain the septics, even with today's standards, but they don't like the dry wells in the new standards, so if anything, they try to put you in a bed. But if it's, you know, the whole area calls you can, you can redig them things up put new stone around the cesspools and then call it good enough again. So as long as he hasn't changed anything, he's hooked to the existing system. You know, back then they didn't call it for a two or three bedroom house. It's just a system. As long as it hasn't failed, he still has a right to use that. It has failed, but they, they did it themselves without benefit of the state or the town. That's what I mean. And that's what the other thing about it is that it's been there for 15 years. 
A large part of the property are class two wetlands according to the state. And the headwaters are where the trailer sits. We have a pond across the road that's fed from the same stream that goes to his house and provides him with water because there's water rights. And it's going right. I don't know where the septic system is exactly, but I think there is a problem there uh, that uh, should be looked into. And of course, I can't do it as a private citizen, and that's why we've come to you or to Merle. And I suppose the state would be next, uh, the wastewater. Uh, Merle, and then I wanted to read a second from the bottom line is it doesn't come under zoning. State. It's the health, health, health officer. Well, health. 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 Okay, so let me read what the state permit dated October 7th, 2014 says. And then this is labeled Wastewater System and Potable Water Supply Permit. Um, permit number WW 2 4761. Landowner Jonathan Sparks. Um, that's not relevant because it hasn't been done yet. That has no bearing on what you're dealing with here tonight. So you're saying this is for a future project? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and your belief is that the current septic system has it's failed? not up to standards, basically. Okay. Well, I think and maybe a health issue at some point. Okay. Well, one thing we can do is to ask the... Um, and health officer, deputy health officer, to go take a look at it. Town, I, I think and depending upon what they find, we can get in touch with the state and, and share that information with them and see mm -hmm. how we proceed on, on that. Is that a, yeah. a reasonable as far as the wastewater issue is concerned? Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that sounds like a reasonable next step. <coughs> okay. So, um, Chairman, would you ask either um, Tim Schaefer or I guess Frank is the deputy? Yeah, but I think Tim would be. Okay, you can check with Tim to see if he'd be able to take a look at that in Russia. Um, is that something that, that anyone's going to be able to see this time Probably of the year? Not. Probably not right now. So it, it may be that that aspect of the issue doesn't get dealt with until the springtime, um, simply because of the snow cover, I'm assuming. But let's get in touch with Tim and ask him. Yeah. Okay, okay so. That's the wastewater aspect of it. How about, I my letter back. Okay. How about the um, setback question that was raised? Any you know, setback issues that you're able to identify? Here in here, the setback is 65 feet, not 75. So it's just barely within. Well, according to the Google Maps, it looks like it's in excess of 100 feet. <coughs> Do they have a little scale on the bottom? Mm -hmm. I scaled it up. I said it's better than 100 feet. Okay. Um, just so that we um, cross all the T's and dot all the I's on this, and when you get a chance, could you run out there and measure that setback just so we know for sure mm -hmm. in case there was any problem with the Google Maps? Okay. Um, so the setback issue we can, can check on. Um, the jump vehicles issue, that's something that I guess we can deal with under the, um, the jump vehicles yeah. ordinance. I have to see if you want to see what we look at. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. The one is the <coughs> Google map, and then behind it is the view from our dooryard. Okay, so what we're looking at is a, a Google photo, an aerial photo that's showing what appears to be a bunch of vehicles on the um, on the property. Um, Can I this? help you with that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Please. This is the data, yeah. and this is 2014 because we wrote it till this piece here this okay. summer, so that can't not, that cannot be in dispute. 
These are all vehicles here, 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 okay. here. There is a, a, what do they call it, a wrecker there. And currently there's a couple of trailers. And there's there, 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 and over here close to the Lillian Dahl property, and here, 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 all over the place. Mm -hmm. And those so, are vehicles? Those are all vehicles. And our jump ordinance says uh, you can only have two unregistered. Registered. Are these registered? Are they all? Are they all? No idea. No. I'm not allowed to go anywhere near the property. And actually, I made who, myself persona non grata. Who owns this? Is, so, are do we have any clarity as to whether the owner of the property? I think he's owns? doing car repairs. They may belong to somebody, but some of them are obviously junk cars because he chops them up to use the parts mm -hmm. for the cars that he's repairing because he does body work. That's yeah. the result of the chemical odors and the sounds. Right. Uh, there was a pile, I can't see it now, of car bodies piled near the Lilienthal's corner. Yeah. And I, I guess what I was asking, are, are some of these left over from Roger the prior, Sparks. yeah, from Roger Sparks, the no, prior owner? none of them. None They're of all them. His. I, I oh. should like to point out that the property, as far as I know, right now, today, belongs to Jonathan Sparks. It does. So, okay. he is the one responsible right. for all the vehicles, yep. including Mark's, that are, they're on his property. Mm -hmm. So that is important that there, no, no property has changed hands. Has any contact been made with him, with, with Jonathan? I, I don't know. I talked with him. He and I talked. I, I had him over to my house and we spent the morning, uh, you know, a couple hours maybe at most, talking about this and then about the history of the Sparks Farms and, and whom I met up with and who I went to school with and that kind of stuff. <laughs> He the, knows about that, about uh, when did this happen? October. Oh, sometime yeah, October. Okay. October. And, and isn't there a sale happening or something's going on? There's something happening in the background between John, Mark John Stevens is, is is trying to sell the property. He is. Yes. Okay. Now I I did call Beverly. That's Jonathan's mother because we were friends at one time. And just to get it picture from her what was going on because Jonathan doesn't answer his telephone or, or make any calls back. Nice. And uh, at the, after the development review board meeting, Jonathan came up to me in a very threatening way, said, don't you ever call my mother again. And I said, well, we were talking as friends. And he said, you're no friend of my mother's. But to his uh, credit, he did call and talk to Chris, my son, and apologize for that. But I don't find any relief trying to talk with him because he's a very volatile person. Now, as far as Stevens is concerned, uh, some years ago when my husband was dying, that was in 2003, Mark Stevens was working on ATVs and running, up and running them up and down the road at 10 o'clock at night and my husband was in the bedroom uh, by the road. So I went out and very gently tried to encourage him to not do that after dark. And his, I don't know if she's his wife or what, uh, uh, Cindy, uh, who lives there with him, came out with a cigarette and thrust it into my face and said she'd put my eyes out if I came over there again. So I've given them a wide berth. Uh, because that isn't the condition for any kind of civil discourse. <clears throat> okay, um, let's zero in on the, the Trump ordinance yeah. for a moment. Um, so it would be the question we would need to send a letter saying that it appears that there are more vehicles on the property than are allowable under the Trump ordinance. Uh, we, yeah. Just one thing to keep in mind the only ones you can enforce are the ones you can see from the road or abutting property. You can't okay. enforce a Google Earth photo. Okay, so good so You can see a lot from your property. So you have to kind of count them by what you can see from, you know, abutting landowners, the road, right, right, right. but not well, from so the air. From, 
from this Google map, though, it appears that there are, there are a lot of trees between those cars and the road. Yeah. Um, no, they're very visible from my dooryard, and there's a there's a row of them like this, and there uh, is a dumpster, a truck, car, truck. Uh, you can't tell from the aerial map. You would have to come and do a site visit. I was going to say. How about these photos that you took from? That's the from my dooryard. Okay, so there. There are clearly more than two that are visible yeah. from the door yard. So, so maybe even on the four members drive. That's why I'm thinking see. we'll do some photos. Yeah. You know, the other thing that you have to remember while you're doing this is we're not growing junk cars. So that doesn't go and fit into the neighborhood that we envisioned as a town and voted in in the town plan. So all of those vehicles are part of the problem. It's not just the ones you can see from the road. We've had all kinds of people drive by, and I've talked to when I've been up in the cemetery doing some work up there or something, that stopped in and said, when are they going to find that place up? In addition, you have a barn and a house that are abandoned. And our zoning bylaws said they have to be dismantled and made gone in one year. And it's been more than one year. <coughs> Merle, can you can comment you, on yeah, that? Yeah, can you verify that, Merle? No. Pardon? Merle okay, disagrees so with that demolition. It's in the town. Uh, let me ask a question more clearly. Um, from the zoning administrator's perspective, are the, are the house and barn abandoned? Is it? They've been abandoned for probably 15 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that, it was being such a Roger. No, Roger five lived years. there. It was an old house. Uh, no, Roger, yeah, Roger died five years ago, and that's when it was. I don't think it was five years ago. You, that no, how many years? Oh, well, maybe it was just five years ago. We're in 2015, 2010. Yeah. I'm trying to think, because I was home he at lived, that time he when he died. There? But yeah, but I part of part told. of the year. Yeah, it was come back in the summer. Back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was. Yeah. You want to see the abandoned building mm -hmm. tax thing right there, but just below that. Okay. Let, let me ask that we focus on one part of the issue at a time so that we make sure we do that. So on, on the junk cars, um, the junk vehicle ordinance itself apparently says it's what can be seen from the road. But it appears there's enough that can be seen from the road that we, we can send a letter to the property owner is saying that it appears you're in violation of the drunk ordinance. Are all those vehicles registered now? If they all happen to be registered, then we have a different kind of issue. But it, it appears that that's probably not going to be the case. So we can at least follow up on that basis from based on the drunk ordinance in terms of what's visible from the abutting properties. Is that a reasonable approach to take on the drunk vehicles? Mm -hmm. And yeah. someone that, from the select board will drive by and take some photos so that we know for yeah. sure we're looking at this. Would, would that um, include, you know, the hacked, hacked apart pieces? Because, you know, they could say, oh, well, it's really not a car, it's just a remnant of a car. I mean, the, the body parts of cars, would that also be part of? I haven't looked at that ordinance in a long time. My recollection is that it would be. Yeah, I would think. Because other than that, we would, you know, we, we really only have one grandfather clause um, junk place in town, right? Which is morals. Because that, because that was there before the ordinance. They're the only ones allowed to have that. Mm -hmm. I think what we. Well, we don't know, although, you know, obviously the homeowners, the garden property owners see this all the time. We don't know which vehicles are there constantly, which ones are there for the repairs or whatever um, the property owner or the renter are doing. <coughs> so we have to find all that out, and then the way we can do it is to send, well, after we take the photos, we'll send a letter to the property owner, yeah. say this appears to be the problem, we have a, a complaint that's been submitted by abutting property owners. Um, please get back to us to explain what the situation is. And then we have to see what the, um, what the next steps are, you know, what, what the enforcement of that ordinance entails, 
if indeed there's, that can't be explained away in some way. So that, that seems like a reasonable approach and jump to this A question about the repair activity that is constant, on, ongoing. And of course, he told his zoning administrator he's only doing it for friends, mm -hmm. but it's been going on for a number of years now, and we've tried to live with it. And this year, it's gotten much worse. It has been every weekend, often at night, and the noise penetrates the house, even toward the back of the house. Now, I don't think he has any permits for the repair, repairing of vehicles. And there's a lot of toxic stuff that comes out of automobiles. My husband worked in heavy metals, and he knows if he was here, he would tell you what comes out of a, a car when it's being worked on if there isn't a proper disposal of those um, toxic metals. And they would be heavy metals like lead and cadmium, et cetera. And my well is, even though it may be not, you know, there may be some distance, there's not much distance because that repair goes on just a little bit beyond my, uh, my well. It's, uh, or at least uh, uh, what, there might be a well shield. That repair, I can see it from the front yard of my house and I can hear it. Uh, it makes it impossible to sit outdoors yeah. when he's working on it. Like so the whole uh, business of permits and the disposal of toxic uh, materials is a great concern. The question that, that occurs to me, uh, so I would open up to you guys as well, is that um, is there a difference if somebody really is doing this as a hobby, even if it's 100 cars a year that he's playing with, versus someone who's doing it as a business? And if there is a difference, how do we ascertain that it really is a business rather than a hobby kind of thing? Mm -hmm. It sounds like the guy is maintaining that it's essentially, he likes to work with vehicles, he tells all his friends they bring their vehicles to him, and he repairs them. But if he's getting paid for it, then maybe it's a different story, and, and mm -hmm. I just don't know what the um, I'd be curious to the thresholds are on that. find out with two other you know other garages. Like, do they have that many vehicles coming in as a <laughs> a daily business? Well, is there a way mm -hmm. for us to legally ask the? I guess it's the um, renter rather than the property owner. Um, are you doing this as a business or is this not a business? Because there seem to be an awful lot of vehicles there. Do we have a legal? It's not a record on it as a business. He's not getting taxes and all that stuff no. out of it. Probably be just as a friend. He, he might. I mean, it could be a, such a thing too as a home industry, right? Is a home industry allowed in residential areas? Not that kind. No. Yeah, there difference. are limitations on it. That yeah. that'd be a, a big stretch on the home industry. Yeah, and the same thing. I mean, just like all the junk. I mean. That's been a farm as long as I can ever remember. Mm -hmm. and I mean, I've known the Sparks all my life, and they always had vehicles there. I mean, what's if you call it junk? I mean, I know there used to be tons of old farm equipment all around that place. See, what happened with those vehicles, the state came down and ordered him to take them off, and he had to remove something like 300 vehicles and or, or pay a very, very stiff fine. And that's what makes <coughs> Roger move. <laughs> He, there's a threat of a lot of money involved. He, there were some left, and Mark Stevens, while Roger was in Florida, sold 70 of them and made $700, because you get $100 a car for them, but it was without Roger's permission. And Roger had, as you can imagine, a little bit of a fit. But I don't think he got the money back, because uh, Mark had already spent it. So what, what can we do in terms of ascertaining if this is actually a, um, a business that's being run? If, if it is a, a business, then it's in violation of the zoning bylaws, which establish that as rural residential, correct? Yeah. yeah. So can we ask the zoning administrator to follow up with the property owner and the renter on that, asking that specific question, or have okay. you already done that? But he's already done that, and, oh, Mark, yeah. and Mark says... Well, yes. Let's see what he said. Are you running a business? Are you repairing cars as a business? And he says no. He works from 8 to 8, five days a week. Gets home about 8.30 at night. And he says, 
the last thing he wanted to do is work on another car. He's a mechanic. So it's a he said, he said. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, unless they sit out there and monitor activity 24 hours, five days a week, I can't answer that. Well, and he's and still. the tenant, right? Yes. Yeah. Are there any real estate agents or uh, attorneys involved with this? You said he was going to sell us? <clears throat> this is totally a separate issue from that. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's on the land that Mark Stevens wants to buy from yes. Jonathan Spark. Okay, so then Chris has a decent question. Are there realtors or attorneys involved who we might be able to check with to see talk, what yeah. their view is? Well, who was the attorney that represented him? It was he, uh, Sparks had an attorney, Bruce Hasselbach, to uh, represent him in regard to the subdivision or selling the property. And the subdivision would be Mark Stevens wants a piece of the property, then the rest of it would be so, sold. Would it make sense for us to get in touch with Bruce Hesselbach then and ask him what he knows about it? Well, yeah, we've got to somehow get, we've got to find out mm -hmm. the he said, she said in terms of whether this is a business operation or not a business operation. Well, the state should be able to help you there mm -hmm. because you can ascertain. Does this Stevens have a business located at such and such an address uh, or another address and get the state to respond? They would have income taxes because uh, I don't think he gives those cars away. There must be some money trading hands. Mm -hmm. cars, so. Are you suggesting he's selling cars out of there too? Oh, no, but this summer there was a Rolls Royce there, and there's been several boats, at least uh, three, four, five, six. And he's doing boats. more than junk with the Rolls Royce. <laughs> well, that wasn't quite junky. It's some green stuff in the house. He probably needed some mechanical work. Can I ask a question then? Because I'm, I think we're, we're getting in deeper and deeper on this thing with each passing moment. I mean, as Mike suggested before, there's there's plenty of gray economy that goes on in the state. So it's conceivable that someone is running a business and never letting the state know about it. Well, that's why. I'm and, I mean, I think it's probably a good first step to check the state to see if there is a, a, a business being operated <clears throat> on that property. Um, but if they don't have any record of it, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's not a business being run there. Um, it's, it's just a question of how we figure that out and what we can do about it. Um, uh, when, even maybe the health officer, when he goes to check the septic, mm -hmm. this is like a health issue with the automobile, so she's saying oil leaking into the mm -hmm. ground. He'd probably catch all that then, wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. And I would think if the guy's buying the property, they usually ask now for anybody buying properties, they want to make sure you got a clean bill of health on the land too. So. Well, my understanding is the fellow who's buying the property who's doing the auto work, right? Or yes. Well, he buys a portion of it. But but that's the guy who does the he auto. Does the auto work. work? Yes. So he this portion is the owner. <coughs> I have a map The owner is doesn't live there. He lives in Connecticut. Yeah. Okay. So, um, why why don't we? Do we can do we can check with the state to see if there is a business a licensed mm -hmm. business operating on that property. We can check with um, Bruce Hesselbach as the attorney representing the current property owner just to find out what he knows mm -hmm. about it. Um, is that any legal confidentiality? My suggestion would be to go back to where we were with a letter um, to the owner, which would be Sparks. And maybe CC that to the attorney. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. then he he's not beholden. Uh, he would just simply know that. That's a good point. Uh, I, I would CC it to the attorney. Well, does that make sense? The board members will send a letter to Jonathan Sparks. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. And you've got the help us going out there, anyways, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, because it's going to be a while. Yeah. Well, you don't see the junk right now either because of the snow. So I mean, I when it's gone, you know, and then. Everything opens up. Mm -hmm. So can we um, can we get a, a letter drafted to 
Jonathan Sparks that lays out all the questions that we're, we're going to try to get some answers now, to. Are you asking the zoning questions or is your zoning administrator asking them? Because some of them, if you're running a business, that's a zoning. Right. Yeah. So, so we need to keep those two things separate. We do. If okay, he's already so asked for that. I'm sorry? Merle says he's already asked him that, right? Have you asked him formally in a letter that he's responded to? Have I? No, no, no. Oh. Okay, so I did ask him. I've asked him several times. In a, in a, in a written Are you letter? Are business? In no. a letter? And he says no. He can't hear you. I'm sorry, Merle. Um, said, did you write a letter to him asking him questions or talk to him? About I could. I talked to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's come so, into the office a few times. Okay, so why don't we do this? Why don't, why don't we ask you as the zoning administrator to write a formal letter to the property owner saying that there are allegations that there's a business being run on the property. Um, is that the case? And ask them to formally respond to it. That way at least we have it in writing um, rather than just the informal conversations. Could you take care of that? Then? So you're talking to Jonathan? As the property, the property owner. owner. Pete. Good <clears throat> I've got to keep my mouth shut tonight. <laughs> uh, as, as I think mo most of you know, I'm the chair of the Development Review Board. The DRB held a hearing on a permit question <clears throat> earlier this year, early in the middle of January, and the decision on that is all but out. <clears throat> I do not see anything in the discussion this evening. Well, that situation is, is beyond us. Uh, I don't see anything in the situation here this evening, the discussion this evening, that uh, <clears throat> would in any way in, uh, affect my hearing any future zoning appeal. However, having gotten where I am right this minute, I would recuse myself and I'll just make that known to everyone. My suggestion to you is quite different from everything that's been suggested so far. I would suggest that you write the landowner and say that you have had a letter <coughs> outlining allegations and you will, will will be holding a hearing on such and such a date at such and such a time at such and such a place where he said she said all in one room before you and you can find out in the meantime I think you could spend some time well <clears throat> investigating the law or the laws from the bylaw zoning bylaw right on up through and develop your position or your inclination, your thinking on the situation and see what the other side says. Not the other side, but you're responsible for, ultimately responsible for the zoning bylaw and for its interpretation and enforcement. And I think that the thing my feeling, my, at this point, is that this thing has gone on long enough so that it should be brought to a head. And the, a way I can see to do it is... If it, um, it, it sounds like a reasonable suggestion to have a public hearing and get everybody in the same room. And I would point out that probably with the, um, the time required for warning the public hearing and all the rest of it, We'd be dropping this in the lap of the next board. Um, That's why I said. It. <laughs> uh, but, but truly, has, but it really has gone on long enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what do you guys think? I'm a little unclear on pushing it right to a public. I know this is our first formal notice of it. I don't know about all this has gone on. I mean, maybe I'm missing something. Well, it's been in the um, no, this is the zoning administrator of DRB so far. So oh, 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 okay. Um, I don't know. 
And this idea of holding a public hearing at the outset, I'm, I don't, Excuse it's almost me. as if we're meeting. Yeah, a second. Can we have one conversation going on at the time of here, please? I apologize, but we're trying to conduct business. Go ahead, please. I, I'm, I, I'm hearing you out, but I'm, what I'm trying to figure out here is it's, it's almost if we run right to the hearing, we're jumping ahead of, informa uh, of even ability to get information. It's almost as if when you, when you call a hearing and you public notice it, now you're doing the mediation right there. That's what you're talking about. I'm not sure. I, I don't think so. I, I'm certainly uh, have been affected by the time I've spent on the DRB, on the ZBA before that. We get stuff, boom, it's on a piece of paper. Bang, we go with a hearing. We don't. That, that's it. There's no question about it. I think that they're in a situation roughly similar to this, that it's absolutely no question that you can go to determine the facts, information, draw information mm -hmm. on the situation that you've had handed to you. But, but Pete, I'll point out that we, we're confined to certain points of this, okay? So one of these, like the health officer, we need to send the health officer out to come back on that septic. That is not something that the board should jump up and do a hearing on in that manner. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? So there's separate points here that we've got to address. So I'm a little, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't know. I'm just saying it, I'm hesitating on jumping into an open hearing as the first step on this without understanding what it is exactly we're doing and making it very confined. You certainly can invite the, zone, uh, the uh, health officer to attend the hearing and be prepared to testify on point number such, such, and such in the letter. Might it make sense to, uh, to share um, Don Peter's letter formally with the um, property owner from the select board to so say we received this letter or considering um, the possibility of a public hearing to deal with the issues. We'll schedule the help officer to come out to take a look at the septic system as soon as the weather allows. In the meantime, um, um, we're requesting that you share your views on each of these issues with us so that the board has some idea of what both sides of the story are. And, and based on that, maybe we have enough information to go ahead and, and schedule a public hearing if that's the appropriate course of action. I think it's a, an interim step. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Um, Jonathan's mother called the town clerk's office kind of early on and really did indicate would any transaction of property kind of she be notified because Jonathan would not return calls as I think Ellen said. So the capability of our getting a response might be pretty minimal from Jonathan. That's okay. So if, if something goes, I think it needs to go certified return receipt requested mm -hmm. so we know it goes. One of my concerns, because I'm trying to get all this together. It seems to me that there's other issues going on. There are some attorneys, there's at least one attorney here, Hesselback, that's involved. Because we have some separate issues that need to be addressed in whether it's the zoning administrator's authority to do, the board would handle junk ordinance, health is a different, that would be Dr. Schaefer on that one. Um, Back to the board as a Board of health. It, it has to come back. The, the thing that you don't want to do is, I, I don't, I can't wrap my head around the hearing as a whole. I try to... Well, let me put it this way. I'm suggesting this as a cut to the chase. Okay. It's, it, this has been going on, as, as we all know, for some time. The zoning administrator has written letters to involve persons, I won't say necessarily. Okay. okay. I don't know who or how many or, or anything like that. <clears throat> I would think that the, that the board, having received this particular letter, 
would like to hear from all parties. And let me just throw in a reminder that Mr. Hesselbeck represents the, op the opposition. Well, I'm, I'm aware of that. Uh, of course, the board, if it jumps in on behalf of the town, inappropriately is you know, needs to make sure that it's doing things appropriately. That's where I was headed, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't right. all believe. See what they say. Call right. Secretary of State. See what they say. Yeah. yeah. I'm just throwing this thing out. Uh, yeah, okay. As a, if. Pete, has there ever been an example of this that you can think of? Call the lady. Call the Secretary of State. I, I don't know. Yeah, I just. I don't, don't see. I don't know of any reason why it can't be. I don't think that there's any presiding body that can't call a hearing on a particular. You, you call hearings on zoning, zoning changes. You call hearings on this, that, and the other thing. I don't see why you can't. Exactly. And at this point, but we already have laws, and they're written there as the bylaws for zoning, and it covers many of these things. Mm -hmm. So if there is a violation and you can see the cars that are violating it, then why is not the appropriate connection right. to do it without having a lot of attorneys and stuff? Right. This is not a gravel pit like most of us in the South of Fame went through 20 years ago. This mm -hmm. is a guy wants to chop up his property. Right. He has every right to do that, but he's got to follow the town plan and it's residential right. you know we're not growing engines and carburetors right. and things here you know that's not the agriculture they're talking about I think part of the problem we're dealing with is that as aggravating as this is we're really hearing one side of the story and, you know, we don't know if the guy does it as a hobby or as a business for example and it's probably valuable for us to find that out we don't know that the septic system is failing, but it's valuable to find that out so we can have the health officer do that. Right. And I, I think that's the, the concern that I have that would make me lean a little bit toward either Pete's suggestion or at least getting this into the hands of the property owner for, formally for a written response so that we, we get the other side of the story on it. I mean, what happens if the guy comes back and we, we write to the property owner, he talks to the renter, and the, um, the renter tells him that, well, you know, I am getting some money for working on the, these vehicles. Um, it's, a, it's a much bigger problem that you can then get the state involved in, Correct. because the guy is, wouldn't have been paying any taxes on the, on the business that he's running. You have the zoning bill, because he's running a business in a residential area without any, um, any permit to do that, it, it, it potentially becomes big problems. Yeah. On the other hand, these folks can come back and assert, you know, I know there are a lot of cars that are there. I love playing with the cars. All my friends know that. They bring me their cars whenever they need help, and I do it for them. I, I don't collect any money at all. You know, if I have to buy a part, they pay for the part, but that's the extent of it, in which case it's a different story. And I, and I just don't know the answer to this. I understand that. You know, we have a farm, and we're always working on tractors or other equipment. But this is different. Mm -hmm. This is ongoing, week after week. And this isn't just last year, it was the year before. Mm -hmm. And there are cars coming and going incessantly. I don't think he's doing it for friends. Sometimes they come in and they're there for half an hour and they're out again. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're there for days or weeks. And sometimes the car is being taken apart. I can see it from my doorway. Uh, this activity produces fumes, noise, even if it's a hobby. If it's now and then, that's acceptable because we all have engines we work on, etc. But to do this day, week after week, I just find it uh, just more than I could stand. I've lived with it for about 10 years now until I finally decided to speak up. So I would like this board at some point. Get us together so we could hear their side and, and our side. But uh, I think I have enough evidence there that uh, this work has been going on. I could probably get more testimony from other people, but I didn't want to drag them into this. Mm -hmm. 
It, it sounds like your inclination, Ellen, would be along the lines of Pete's suggestion to have a public hearing yes. about this. Peter, you think that makes sense? Well, you have to call it a hearing and just invite the old people in. Well, also, you with the law, having bring in Bruce Hasselbach, since he was the, the lawyer that represented the, the opposition at the DRB hearing. We don't have an attorney. We can't afford one. So that would make it an uneven... Uh, well, it wouldn't be um, a judicial hearing. It would be an informational gathering. Still, he's an attorney have, with yeah. the kind of clout an attorney has. <coughs> he um, would be representing him as an attorney. He's yeah. not <coughs> representing them as a friend. I mean, he will charge them a um, fee. For I his. understand what I'm saying. I, I think that that anybody coming before the board has the right to be represented by counsel for any reason. I mean, if, if, if I wanted to build a 10-foot fence around the property and had to go to a zoning hearing, I could bring an attorney with me to represent yeah, I understand. Me. So I don't think that we're in a position to be able to say, you can't bring an attorney well, with you. Well, they wanted to bring him as a legal representative, but to invite him to testify is a totally different matter. Oh, that's a fair point. So what we could do is to um, ask the property owner to respond to this information, either do it in writing or, or do it in a, at a hearing or do it at a warm, regular meeting of the select board. You know, there are probably lots of different ways yeah. to do it. Getting the information and answers in writing really makes it formal. And the ideas that were here send a questionnaire or some statements to be answered by the landowner and then his tenant and it's in writing you can't take that and throw it away it's got to be done right you can't bs it and that's needed if you want to go with this plan of having some kind of public hearing but it's going to get expensive because I, as a taxpayer in New Fame, I expect the select board to protect me through regulations like the zoning administration. Because I like my life the way it is. I don't like smoke and noise and all this stuff. You are a member of the group of towns and things that have legal capability and can provide lawyers. Well, I would insist that you provide me with a lawyer from that pool of lawyers because I shouldn't have to pay the taxes that I do and not be represented in this situation, which seems people want to escalate a little bit more than is necessary. So I'd like you to consider that. Yeah. I don't know how to answer yeah. that point, Peter. There is no pool of lawyers that we can provide for you. And the, and well, the town uh, yes, really wouldn't... Yes, there is. Yes, there is. The town wouldn't have a responsibility to provide a lawyer to one party to an issue where there, there are two different sides to the story. So I understand what you're saying, but okay. I, I think our hands are tied yeah. on it. And I think what we do then is we start going around canvassing our neighbors, having them join with us, and we'll get a bigger and bigger group through the town. Because it's not just the Lillian Falls and the Darrows, it's a lot of people in the town that are disturbed with this. And it keeps going and nobody does anything. Well, we what I suggest the is, board to do so. I think what we should do, as long as we've got one more meeting between us, right? This board is sitting here right now. Now, may I wouldn't even call it a hearing. Send that paper to them, invite them to our, our next meeting. You people come, they come. Is and that enough warning time? I don't think it's enough warning time. Well, you don't get one more meeting between this board, so it's either that or nothing. Uh, what we say to the next board uh, meeting, that would be the legal proof. There's no well, the way I look at it, if that's going to go on to the next board, I wouldn't want to go until after spring when I can go look at it, when I can see something. I'm not going to wallow through three feet of snow at this time of year to look at it. Don't blame you. <laughs> and, uh, Jen, but I'm just you? saying, as this board had come in front of us, why couldn't we ask them to come to the next meeting? Why would it have to be a warrant? It's not a hearing. We're looking for information. You guys come, they come, sit down. They say their side of it. You tell us theirs. And Merle's already told us his. We can't get the health officer to look at it until spring. And we're not going to go out and count junk cards this time of year. So. Well, I'm not sure why that would that's, you have to warn it? 
it's not really. No, I we're know. asking them to come to a meeting. Yeah, that's different. But I'm not sure that we can't. As a matter of fact, junk cars are more visible, I think, in the wintertime without the leaves on the trees than otherwise. So. Unless they're buried in well, two feet of snow. snow. <laughs> yeah, but I... And then how do you tell I, if it's I junk? How do you tell if he says it's got a plate on it? Or? Yeah, I mean, my first encounter with a select board, and I think you were on it, Gary, is you know, my neighbor had 15 junk cars, and I took pictures and came and, and went to Pete, and, and really, he looked into it, but it really was the select board, and that got taken care of. It took several years, but, and, okay. and I think the unfortunate part about the noise is that state law, you know, again, my neighbor raced vehicles on buckler vehicles, and, you know, checked with state police and said, you know, at 10 o'clock you can, you know, at night, so they could go 12 hours a day. Okay, just so that we can um, move along over here, unless somebody has something additional they wanted to add to what we've heard so far, something we haven't heard. If, if not, then I would like to have a discussion with the board about how you'd like to proceed from here. We have a couple of options on the table. Um, one is a formal hearing, one is a less formal arrangement where we um, invite the people to join us at the next meeting of the board. And the third one is to um, get a response from the property owner in writing so that everything's on paper rather than um, just more verbal battles in, in, uh, in a meeting. Uh, those are the three <clears throat> options that are I think we to could, me. What do you guys think? I think we could do them all. Basically, I think we've decided that Merle can write a letter. He's certainly in the jurisdiction of the light and glare noise. If it wants to go into writing, that's something that Merle can write a letter as we're directing to clarify that in writing. Uh, the board has already said that we should have a health officer. Whether it takes a month or two months is irrelevant. Okay, that becomes active. Um, we can check with the state with regard to any businesses and so on. And my suggestion would be to do all we write a letter to the property owner with a CC to the known attorney. We advise them that we have this letter. And as a result of that, we've asked the health officer to review the septic, the zoning administrator to deal with the things within his purview and to expect a letter. But we'd like to have them come at the next board meeting if it's possible, um, but that we expect a response um, to this letter received. Okay, so is that a motion that you're making, Chris? Second it. I guess it was Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that entire, did you get all that? <laughs> <laughs> so may I ask, does that mean you, you have, don't want to have the hearing? We're inviting them to come to the next no. meeting. Inviting, what you just said. In lieu of a hearing which stretches out in time, we're essentially, and I'm going to say, there's actions that are being taken as a result tonight. Mm -hmm. We're going to put that into writing and say these are the actions that we're taking. Here's what the board's received. You come back to us. Please come back to us at the next board meeting. We could always take Pete's notion and even the next board could set up a hearing if that's possible, but it doesn't leave you with no action. It leaves you with a coupled action. Oh, so you, what you're saying is not, as Mike suggested, not to say, could they come in person next? Meeting? Yeah, say that right in the letter too. Okay. We'd like, we would uh, uh, lo love to invite you to the very next But not just meeting. the landlord, that Stevens too. Yeah, absolutely. Because and that's a good idea to CC. I'll amend my motion to CC the tenant. Have we, uh, we had Stevens. a second to that? Yeah. yeah I do. Uh, are you going to accept that from the amendment? Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> okay, Can so. I ask the question? May I ask the question? Sure. About when you're making uh, this motion that you'd like to have this meeting occur next, in two weeks, and you write letters to everybody, and you either will get responses or you won't get responses, right. and people will either show up or they won't show up. Yeah. What is what is the select board and everybody's responsibility or 
not responsibility, but what are you, uh, what is the consequence that you would write, if any? Like, we, uh, we've been going through this, it's been going on for a long time, we have this in front of us, uh, we need to have a meeting next time, and then what? That's the point I was making. If by next meeting we've had no response anyway, we've already instituted the health officer, we've asked the zoning administrator to deal with the violations in his purview, we've put this on record in writing and CC'd it all the way around, the board could then sit and say, gee, we've had no response from any of these people. You know, maybe Pete's suggestion should go on to the, to, you know, there's a number of different things Actually, we can do, but you can move. You, you have already taken the first step to move that forward. Does that make sense? So if there's no concept, I mean, if nothing comes back at our next meeting and just the people who are in the audience now are here and we don't have the homeowner, then we could say, I mean, because it's already in writing, that we would have a hearing. You know, the new select board would, within a certain amount of time, have a hearing. If the question is, is there a hammer that we can use for non-compliance, then I think the answer is no. But what we would be doing under this arrangement is putting in motion the, the health officer's review of the situation, mm -hmm. getting a report from them, from Tim Schaefer, which is a very serious thing. The, um, the zoning administrator dealing with the um, identified or alleged zoning mm -hmm. violations. We'll have that in writing. Uh, the, the other point, Chris, I, I assume you meant to include in, in there was um, sending that letter to the state to ask about whether yes. there's a business going on in the property. Yes. So we'll have a response from the state at some point in writing right. that says there is or isn't a business going on over there. Um, yeah, I understand all of that, but when you're writing to the owner and or the tenant also, wouldn't it be important to have a due date by when you expect a response? And if not, then the next, then what is the next step that's going well, to happen? Well, that's pretty much what we're kind of doing. Mm -hmm. That's why I said instead of calling it a hearing, we're just inviting into the meeting mm -hmm. yeah. while these guys are still here. Essentially, that's what the letter is. We'd like to have you come to the next yeah. board meeting, which is two weeks, but to make a response to this is this is the first formalized letter that we've received. Essentially, what we're doing is we're laying, we're setting this up, we're putting it into no, writing, we're putting it into motion, and making an allowance for those parties to come come back here. It's it's and if they don't, then then you can move to the next step, which is hey, the, you know, we need to open this up or we start gathering some more information that changes certain aspects of maybe even parts of this letter. Should we uh, include in this um, letter inviting to the meeting to the request that they respond to each of these points in writing? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. yeah, I, okay. if, if yeah, I think, speak. I have a letter, Carol. Go ahead, Carol. Is this letter going to be certified? Yes. That's right. And with nature, Thank you. Yes, uh, the select board um, had recourse to use um, a lawyer of its own if we don't understand uh, what the legal ramifications could be so of this we, particular we situation. On, on behalf of the select board, though, right? right. The town. Of the, the town. town. So we could find out, in fact, what the law is regarding this person having a hobby which pollutes the area, mm -hmm. and whether that's actually legal or not, mm -hmm. separate from whether he's having a business or whatever, right? Yeah. Is that something that we would need to find out? I'm, I'm not sure I understood the last part. We, we do have the authority to seek legal advice on anything. So if there are questions... But isn't isn't there a question mark now, though? About whether, about whether or, or not this person is actually illegally polluting the area. Yes. Well, but Isn't that something that we need to, then as a select board, you need to go and find out what the legal um, um, ramifications are for well, that? What, what we're doing right now basically is asking the state, is this a licensed business? Right. And if the answer to that <clears throat> is no, then I don't think we can jump to the conclusion that the guy is illegally running a business there. 
Um, we'd have to have pursue that. In the area, yeah, I, I state I'm wondering, wondering if that, that. that wouldn't go with the Agency of Natural Resources. It does. It does, yeah. It's not the purview of the select board at that okay. point, was it? Okay. But, but I think so. Going to another area, yeah. Okay. okay, which they would be then entitled to. And that's the pursue. point of kind of dragging yep. to open okay. it up. Thank you. There, there is another avenue entirely, which I guess is it's always possible to. Um, go to the environmental court. Let's say that the select board and the, the, the zoning administrator and the DRB have come to some conclusion, conclusion A, and one of the parties says, I still don't like that. That party <coughs> has the right to take it to environmental court. Isn't that correct, Pete? Yeah. Yeah, so Does it mean the representation? Or do they hear hmm. just people? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I, I think you always have the right to represent yourself in those things, but I, I just don't know. the The issue here, though, is that while a select board has some semi-judicial um, authorities and responsibilities, we can create a zoning bylaw, for example. Um, we don't have any adjudicatory right to find that. That that one assertion is I see. is 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 the truth in that. Right. Okay. If, for, for instance, so, so, if, so basically, we're not seeing any judgment on this guy. Well, we, can, we, we can't, can't do until that. we have the fact. But right. we could make the request we're making for this in writing, and if the um, if the property owner chooses not to respond to it in writing, I think we still have a problem because if you go into court of law and the, and the judge says. I want this um, information by the next court date, well, and right. the person doesn't show up with it. The judge just says, "Okay, I'm finding for the other side." Mm -hmm. I don't think we have that authority yeah, that, to do that. Right. So that's why maybe that environmental court thing, if if it ever got to it, would be another option to consider. Mm -hmm. One question: What is the difference between a meeting and a hearing? A hearing. <coughs> It's typically more formal. It's an it's an effort to get facts to elicit facts in the form of uh, documents and or and or testimony. Whereas a meeting is you get together and you yak. <laughs> well, a meeting so you get together and kind of hash out. Try to maybe figure it out, but seeing as we can, then it will go to that hearing. That's right. Where then the lawyers and whatever else take over, and they come in, they settle it, and what it is, it goes into law. But I mean, first step would be to probably try to solve it between yourselves. I mean, get it solved. I mean, and another thing is, this person is trying to sell that property. They sure as hell don't want to go in with a violation, a zoning violation, as a junkyard or whatever else, because that lawyer is going to suggest to the guy buying it, you don't buy it, because this could be contaminated. If you're saying contaminated. And there's a lot of stuff that goes along with that. So I think the first thing, what I was trying to do by saying is a meeting instead of a hearing, you know, so it's the big word. We're all on this board right now one more time, one more meeting after tonight. And we're just trying to get it so everybody could come in and sit down and talk. If it doesn't work any good, and then when the rest of them, the new ones get on, we can go for a hearing. Yes, ma'am. What I am leery of is you're going to have another one of these meetings. We've been through two of them, and it's been talk, talk, talk. One side is the other, and the zoning administrator maintains that uh, this fellow is just doing the uh, repairs of cars for friends. Now, I've been through this several times. I'm not convinced by that, so I would like a different venue that would pump it up into a much more serious way of approaching it, which would be a hearing. Otherwise, you're going to have another meeting, and there's going to be us talking and them talking, and it's going to waste your time. <laughs> Either way, though, at this juncture point for this board or even the upcoming board, okay, this is our first run at this, right. and, okay? So this is the first thing that we have. In order for the board, even for the next board moving forward, we have to have an establishment in writing to place this forward. Whether we go to the hearing or not, Alan, that we might, you know, the next board might be able to do that, or, but we have to say, look, we had a meeting tonight. We've got this in documentation. There are a number of things on here that we've done. 
The zoning administrator will be contacting you. The health department's going to be contacting you. We'd like to have your response within two weeks um, to this document uh, and invite you to the meeting if you should wish to come. What it does then is it establishes uh, an actual setup so that you're not yak, yak, yakking, whether it's a hearing or a meeting. So there's no action that will be taken. It's just more It lays input. the, okay. the groundwork, including for the state, see? Okay. So it just sort of sets the whole thing right into motion, and we're not going to do yak, yak, yakking. We've looked, we've, we've let them These know. These are all registered businesses in South New Okay. So that part's easy. Okay. So and I highlighted all the honor roll ones. Okay, okay. so this this person doesn't have a registered business. No. Okay, so we know we know okay. the answer to that. There's not a registered business for that part. Yeah. Um, I had a thing I'd like to find out about. That. I'd like to get copies of all the letters and things that are sent out to people regarding this issue. Um, I you know I don't. I just want to keep myself well informed. Sure. So if you could do that, I'd appreciate it very much. So why don't we CC all the interested parties okay. on anything that goes to the state, to the yeah. health officer, to the, the other parties? Yeah. Okay. Um, as I think about it, I'm, I'm wondering whether the maybe the most valuable thing we could get by the next meeting is a response in writing, just so that there is something formal to it. Oh, absolutely. But so, while well, we we can invite the people yeah. to be there, mm -hmm. maybe an important part of the letter is to say, um, we're we're requesting your response in writing to each of these assertions by the February the latest. Right. Okay. So if if we do that, at least 18th. the the homeowners, or the the My current wife. property oh, owner. What is today? Today is the fifth, so two weeks is the fourth. Is the nineteenth? Nineteenth. Okay. She was looking on the top. Yeah. So at, at least we potentially have something in writing from the property owner. Mm -hmm. It's at least suggesting to the property owner that you know, if you have concerns about any of these things, maybe you do want to talk to your attorney before you blithely say there's no business going on over here or anything like that, just so that you're not coached up. But I don't think we have to say that explicitly. Just say, please respond to these points right. Right. by the 19th. Now, the, the issue that comes up, of course, is that um, the property owner could ignore even certified mail receipt requested. And there's, that still doesn't mean that the select board can say, OK, you didn't pay attention to us. We're going we're to um, stop you from doing something else uh, because there's legal procedure that would have to be followed, but at least it's a start. At least there'd be something in writing where the guy says, um, you know, on the setback, I measured it and it's 75 feet or whatever it happens to be on the on the light pollution. I agree with that. I'm going to shield those lights and da 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 But whatever it is, at least it would be in writing. And I think if if I were receiving a letter like that and had to respond to it in writing, I'd probably check with my attorney to make sure I wasn't setting myself up in some way. Um, maybe that'll happen as well, and, and maybe the person will get some advice that suggests that there's a way to deal with some of these issues that, that we're not seeing at the moment. And that, I think, is my point. In establishing this in writing and setting it out there, you are already moving um, several venues, zoning administrator, health, and it's possible you're right. They might not even show up to a hearing. But I think the board then meeting. would have meeting instead of a hearing. Either way, hearing meeting. But I mean, for but this week. Um, you know, I don't know that it would stop the board. This might be legal counsel at that point, but it wouldn't yeah. stop the board if they didn't respond at all to maybe uh, make a contact with the state and say, hey, you know, we've got some allegations here. Ding, 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 ding. We've received no response. Would you take a look at this? But to, to go to court, which is out there agree but that <clears throat> always has to be in your mind you have to know that there are violations yeah. you have to yes. know that there are and that they have not been responded to and so forth and exactly. so on they've been going on for such and such an amount of time you have allegations right 
at this <coughs> point, and that's about all. One thing, just very uh, sideline, perhaps uh, Mr. Hesselbach's name has come up a couple of times. I would not send anything to him at this point, just to the other parties. And if they want to hire him, fine and dandy, mm -hmm. but nothing from the, from the board. I think Pete's making a good point about what we have and what we don't have. We have mm -hmm. allegations and assertions, maybe they're 100% correct, who knows? But, but we don't know at the moment until we get some answers to some questions. Okay. I agree completely with Mike. The, the best way to get at this thing would be to sit, get a round table, okay. set it up out in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Make a short um, meeting. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Let me, let me try to um, yeah, summarize the, the motion. We're going to um, send a letter to the property owner, the current property owner, um, transmitting this letter that we've received from Ellen Darrow and Peter Lilienthal, um, requesting response to the allegations in writing by um, February 19th, and inviting the um, property owner and the renter the tenant. to the tenant. A, a, the tenant to um, to come to that February 19th select board meeting to further discuss the issue. In addition, as part of that motion, we were going to. Um, be sending a note to Tim Schaefer to ask him to look into the health aspects of it and to, uh, to Merle to look into the zoning aspects of it. Is there anything else that was intended in that motion? Pete, what's that? Right, i for somebody. Uh, I would say send the letter to the landlord. Period. He's a responsible party mm -hmm. and and let him get to the tenant if he wants to. Yeah, I mean, I, I, no, the he's responsible. Is you contact him. You tell him what you're looking for. He decides how he's going to get it or if he's going to get it or with whom he's going to get it. And I, I would be leery of Well, I think the letter was going to be addressed to the property owner, just be CCing the tenant as well, so he knows what's going on. The reason on. is the tenant is named in this letter, so. Well, as running a business. He's named as running an automotive repair business here. And he says he's not, so I mean, you guys were kind of trying to want to see that for ourselves, right? So, I mean, if you did do it to just the landlord, you'd want them to notify him saying there's allegations of an illegal repair business going on your property. That piece, I think if you just did them, they'd have to get a hold of him to show up. Either way. It, it, I'm speaking at least at the outset. Keep it where your arrow and point is stated, stay narrow. Is there, is there any reason why we shouldn't include the tenant in, in a CC the same way we'd include Ellen and Peter in the CC? Uh, Yes, because John has a lawyer. Mark has a lawyer, right? Excuse me? Jonathan has the lawyer. The Bruce Hessel No, 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 no. Uh, we know that Mark Stevens has been represented by Mr. Hesselback in other cases in the past. We don't know anything at all about Correct. this that it started when it hit your desk okay. a couple of days ago. So we don't know if he, as a matter of fact, I could guarantee you he has no attorney right now. So, so he has no attorney at the moment? I have no idea. We don't know. So uh, Bruce Hesselbeck did not come to the DRB? He didn't. He testified on behalf of, of Mr. Stevens. Oh. I, yeah, that's right. I'm concerned about the letter that the select boards received, which names Jonathan Sparks and Mark Stevens Arbor Hole Road. So I think it's a duty of the board, since the allegations are to both, at least to see, don't, wouldn't you say? Well, it depends on, I think you could use terminology in the letter that would bring them in at the same time. I would think it would be addressed to the landlord. 
By bring him in, I mean bring the tenant in. So perhaps in the, uh, the letter to the landowner, we prominently indicate early in the letter that the uh, the allegations of violations apply both to the property owner and to the current tenant. Yes, they do, yeah. Um, and leave it at that. Let him decide what he wants to do yeah. with the tenant, at least it brought it to his attention. So then the only CCs would be to Peter and Ellen. Well, I guess we should CC the zoning administrator as well. Oh, as well as I meant to Yeah, but in terms of the interested parties, that's what it would be. Now, personally, I have no problem with CCing the tenant as well. If, if, if you prefer to keep it tight, then that's okay, too. I'm going to assume the, the motion is to address it to the property owner, point out in there that the allegations relate to the tenant as well as the property owner. Um, CC Willenthal and Darrow and ask for the written response by the 19th and invite to the meeting on the 19th. Anything else that we would want to consider can come up after we vote on that motion. So if that motion passes, that's what we do. That you were yeah. contacting the health, I mean, part of the that property was owner. the health officer. Oh, yeah, oh, right, yeah. Because that was part of this That's motion, right. right, the health officer and, and also the zoning, zoning administrator. Okay, so we've got three, three written pieces here that we're voting on. The letter to the homeowner, referencing the point that both mm -hmm. the homeowner and the tenant are alleged to be in violation of some of the rules. Letter to Tim Schaefer as the health officer, asking him at the earliest opportunity to take a look at the septic system issue there. Mm -hmm. Letter to Merle, just so we have for the record, saying we'd like you to take a look at the allegations related to the zoning with setback, light pollution, whatever is within the purview of zoning rules. And um, and that would be it. That's what we're doing now. The bottom line is a response from these folks by the 19th and a um, invitation for them to join us at that meeting on the 19th. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there anything else that we want to discuss about this or are we ready to vote on the motion? Shannon, you understand what we're talking about? I got it. Okay. I would also suggest that um, if we pass this motion, that Chris, maybe you and Shannon can work together on the letters to make sure that we don't miss any points you have in mind or okay. okay, we're ready to vote. Yes. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries unanimously. Okay. Uh, thank you very, very much for coming in this evening and spending so much time with us. <laughs> Stay warm. Um, uh, finally, the sooner the better on getting that letter out. We can get it out by Monday. That's it. Okay. Um, Is that going to be, you'll be signing it? I guess I should sign it. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's go back to the regular agenda now. We're going to do that other the zoning violation. Okay. The zoning oh, violation. Oh, thank you. You're right. So, Merle. I'm sorry, Merle, we forgot one other thing. This is the zoning bottom. No, the violation, the violation of that logging over there. Remember when we talked about the bylaw, we had one in the bathroom. Oh, fine. I have spoken the wrong on that. Okay, so let's do. Oh, my goodness. I do have a zoning violation for. Day by day and okay, um, Merle, could you join us up here for just a moment? We'll take care of this other issue and then move on to the rest of the agenda. Ellen, did she, Ellen, did she need those? Oh, <laughs> okay, we're going to continue business now, folks. Um, all right, who wants to describe what this zoning um, violation follows just so that we can take care of that? This was a um, uh, zoning violation that was going to include some money that's on file, I think. Um, and you and I today talked about that, Merle. Um, my understanding is all we have to do is if the violation is over, the person presents to you 
notification that they have, they're now complying, mm -hmm. so to speak, then it's in your jurisdiction. Um, as far as that issue goes, the only thing that the board would need to uh, concern itself with is whether we had any fine accrual. And one of our, one of the issues that we brought up on this was there's a, a zero to maximum fine. We never set an amount, which is really not a good thing. <laughs> That's not very defined. So that's, that was the language that you were going to rewrite yeah. for the zoning bylaw? Yeah, to the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. And change. And then we're supposed to be voting on that tonight as well, the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but the problem is, it's been sitting there for a year. Yeah, yeah. And wasn't there a kind of cool every day of that you're in violation? Yeah. But the thing that's unclear is how much. Yeah. So we would and like to address zero that. to a hundred. So what would zero to a hundred per day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what would your recommendation be about zero? Excuse me. Yeah. What's your recommendation? I get proof that the roughly the the Yeah. Thank you. If we send the letter, we put a letter in the back, get it recorded. <laughs> Okay, so the recommendation from the zoning administrator is that he'll get um, some some evidence that the violation has been resolved, that the issue has been resolved, and if that's the case, his recommendation would be to rescind any fines associated with that issue. Okay. You yeah. just struck me with a memo mm -hmm. to rescind the violation. And if it's okay with the board, my understanding was that the violation was removed, taken care of <laughs> quite a long time ago. It's just that formal notice hasn't been made. Right. Um, and I can have that verified. I think it should be done in writing to Merle. Okay. Yeah, and if you do that, and then as Merle says, once we'll once he does it. that, he'll get something so that it can be you know, like Expunged. a lease, uh, lien release. or uh, uh, As far as the violation, you know, yeah. the fine... Okay. You decide that. It's a municipal yeah, ticket, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can say zero. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking that that would be best right now because we didn't have anything in place. Mm -hmm. And if this ever comes up again, the the language in the zoning bylaws will will, change. will have changed. Exactly. Okay. So Merle, you'd like something from the select board instructing you to handle it that way. That if it's yeah, if, if it's been resolved. That you, any, whatever you want to. And any fines can be rescinded so that yep. zero. Okay, is the board okay, okay with sending such a uh, mm -hmm. memo to Merle? Someone want to make a motion? Um, he, who are you pointing at? Okay. I'm sorry, he, he was uh, making finish, a question. Finish your business, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> is, it, is it related to this? So, Possibly. Finish your business. Okay. Okay, so um, someone want to make a motion? <laughs> thinking how, how that one's got to go. I move to have the select board instruct Merle to review the zoning violation. Yeah, review the zoning violation, violation, violation and upon proof of the violation having been taken care of to um, place such we call it a discharge sort of um, in the file and have it <coughs> recorded. Uh, with no fine associated. With no, that's right. Yeah, with yeah. no. Um, no dollar amount. No dollar amount. Second. So I've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Um, I would just ask Merle, that will be enough for you to do what you need to do? Okay. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries unanimously. Jen, could you do a, such a memo? And I guess for my signature as well tomorrow. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Actually, you can tonight. sign it for me. I was going to say, you don't really sign memos, but. Okay. <laughs> I'll just send you one. Okay. All right. Anything else on, um, anything else that we need tomorrow to be here for? Pete. Yes, sir. <clears throat> well, I'm sorry. While I was listening, I 
thought I heard you say that you were waiting for proof. I would say you should have proof before you take the action you just took. Yeah. Enough said there. The other thing is, I think I heard something about fines. Mm -hmm. Fine? Penalty. As, as set by? In the zoning bylaw. As set, but some, some individual who allegedly was violating the zoning bylaw was notified that he or she was subject to fines mm -hmm. as set by? By laws. By the bylaws, it's up to a maximum of such and such a day. By the environmental court? No, 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 no it's by Arizona the zoning bylaws. Zoning bylaws. Uh, my mistaking, my, my understanding is that the town has no right to assess fines. That the fine, if any, comes from the you know, court. And why do we have them in the I, <clears throat> It may be that we have to go to court to enforce it. But if we're, if we're concluding that there's zero fine, then we don't have to if you, involve the court. If you believe that the uh, violation, if you have proof that the violation is gone, you can say, okay, we can no longer pursue enforcement of this alleged violation. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's what we're trying to yeah, do. Yeah, that's what we're but trying to do. But you're bringing up a good point, up. which is that maybe we need to make sure when we go over the zoning bylaw that it's clear in there, one way or the other, that for enforcement of any fine we do levy, that's got to be enforced by the court. The zoning bylaw gives direction to the zoning administrator, uh, so right, right on up to the courts. But I, I may be wrong, but I don't think so. I think that any fines have to be yeah. Court implemented. I think you're it right. Sounds familiar. We we had a stumble on this because of the way the bylaws were written. And we didn't properly that's what I'm saying, we didn't set a fine fee. Okay. So I'm we sorry. were gonna try to But when we were looking at the bylaws that violation had already been um, in the files and recorded, so Right. So we realized we had a an issue we needed to correct. Barry, do you remember what language you put into the change of that? Um, I, I don't remember, remember, but I have it over here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't remember giving it. Yeah. I don't think we had a copy of that release tonight. I thought there was. Let's see. <clears throat> it really was just that one section that we put in. Make any changes as well. Exactly. That was the stumbling one right there. Yeah, that, that was the only thing. I thought it was just fairly close to the end of the. Um, I, I see exactly where uh, it is. I just don't have my notes. You're looking so. for the notes that were voted out. <laughs> yeah. Actually, would she have me? I'm going to say, Shannon, is it possible to? You said it's online. Um, let's see if we can find back his page here, and I might be able to zero you right in. Let's see if that down page. Twelve. Each. That's the only copy we have. Okay, well, Shannon's looking. Section two twenty one on page twelve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what does it say now? Did we put in the mediation language? Yeah, so it does say all fines and violations. So I think it's the enforcement of that that Pete's referring to. Right. I think that he's correct that, that we really don't have the authority to go ahead and enforce that and correct it. We need to go to the court and say, we levy this fine and will you guys take care of it? Mm -hmm. I, I think that the background is you can't be prosecutor and judge at the same time. Oh. I, I, 
problem is we didn't have, how do you do that with a zero? We don't, we don't have an amount. We didn't do anything. It's we not an issue, it. then. Exactly. <laughs> we didn't do it properly. <laughs> because so if, if we wanted to find the person $10,000, we'd have to go to the court. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Where'd you find him? Actually, I just found the email that you had sent me with the language. Okay, here's the language. Any, any fines imposed under this section may be appealed in writing to the select board within seven business days from the imposition of the fine. The select board shall hear such appeals at a legally warned meeting and after hearing from the appellant and the zoning administrator, may at its discretion sustain, reduce, or overturn any imposed fine. But who imposes that? We're, we're imposing it, but the, the court would have to enforce it. Can we impose it? Is that what you're saying we can't well, I don't do? think so. Yeah, see, that's what... I think just as an attorney can recommend a fine in a court, the regular court situation... So why don't we change that language to say, or overturn any recommended fine, rather than imposed? No, coming back to, where's the punch? Uh, in other words... Hey, well, you know, I, I like my... Uh, the, the punch is the court, and the court can either mm -hmm. sustain it for us, or they can say forget about it. But we would have to... I, I think that it's just a matter of sending... Court? No, I think it's a, taking the person to court, or just notifying the court uh, that we want to place this one. I'm not aware of the situation that you're speaking of. <clears throat> But my understanding is, if there is a violation of the New Fame Zoning Bylaw, the select board would then uh, appeal to the Development Review Board. If the Development Review Board, after that, it would go from, <clears throat> as a result of either party's Actions to go to court, to the environmental court. To the environmental court. Okay, so but for the purposes of, of what we're appeal. doing right now. I, I don't, uh, <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a lot confused as to how this one that you're talking about came up and what was dealt with and so forth and so on, but at the same time, um, I'm concerned that we not, we the town not get into a bind with something like this and, right. and end up in a, in a real problem. Well, in, in, this instance, since, in this instance, since the recommendation would be that there not be any fine levy, then that's the end of it then, right? There's no way to go to court. You, you, yeah, you just saved me a whole lot of worry by taking the violation away. Thank, thank you. Okay, but, but, but on the other if hand, there is a violation at some point, right? Yeah, what's all the select board the would one? be doing is recommending the level of the fine. And if it goes back to the DRB, we we send the recommendation to the DRB. The yeah. DRB says it does something, and then the, the person appeals to the environmental court, or the DRB goes to the court to get it enforced. Right. If the zoning administrator came across what he sincerely believed to be a violation of the bylaw, and he could not deal with it with the landowner or the responsible person. He could then come to the select board and say, I've done this and this and this and this with him, and this is where we are. And the select board would then say, oh, that's definitely, in our opinion, a violation of the by bylaw. We're taking it to court. <laughs> mm -hmm. Would you have said that possibly before that if the zoning administrator could have taken it to the DRB or come to the select board and the select board say it be looked at by the DRB? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, he, he had said that Sorry. before. I skipped a second. Yeah, so go to the DRB and then if that doesn't get anything, go to court. Is that on the violations, or is that actually on the appeal of the issue? Can you do us Okay. Uh, if there is a question in zoning, <coughs> it essentially goes to the DRP. Okay. 
That's why John has a big smile on his face some nights. I found this thing that Pete Van Loan had in a file <gasps> uh -oh. regarding zoning violations and fines. What did he say? <laughs> Thanks, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 117, and I think that's what we're... Yeah, chapter 117. Yeah, we got it. So it's the same that's in the in the zoning bylaws here. So it's kind of like when there's a pump ordinance violation. You have to go mm -hmm. to the Municipal Ordinance Bureau, and they will issue a ticket. And I'm assuming that that would be if you properly set a an actual fee. Uh, it's yeah. Well, no, it's set by statute. <laughs> Up to. Yeah. Up to. So. But again, the court can, Please. can say, Please. you do this, you do that, yeah. you pay this, whatever remedy the court feels is appropriate in, in the situation. And mm -hmm. Okay, so it sounds like whatever the select board's recommendation is, unless the recommendation is no fine at all, in which case everything goes away. We didn't, there was, this discussion didn't take place. Yeah. yeah. But if there's any fine recommended, that ultimately it's got to go to, what is the, the, the general. municipal? Ordinance Bureau or Superior Court. Okay. For the court to decide what's actually going to happen on it. Since that time, that court system has changed and it is now an environmental court. Environmental. Okay. Do we need to refer to that in the um, in the bylaws, or that just applies no matter what I, you say in the bylaws? I, I, I think there are a number of things that need to be straightened out in the bylaws, even even now. But then that would be one that be sure, sure that it, right. Chapter one seventeen has recently undergone a fairly significant rewrite, okay. and you've got to be up to date with with it. Exactly. Okay, so let me see if I understand where we are on this, because we were presented with the, um, the draft zoning bylaw revisions by the Planning Commission, mm -hmm. and we then decided we wanted to make this one change to it only. Mm -hmm. Presumably the Planning Commission took into account all this stuff, although it seems like that may not have been the case. If it wasn't the case, should we refer this back to the Planning Commission and say double check the section 117 stuff to make sure it's up to date. Mm -hmm. I think on that. I mean, for us adopting these bylaws. Well, I'm just wondering if, if they're adoptable for us at the moment or whether we need to do more work on two, it. Two, two questions. One question Has the select board held a public hearing on the proposed? Sort of. Bylaws. No, mm -hmm. I'm not saying sort of. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Nobody showed up. I was here. Yeah. No members of the public showed up. Yeah, but it was duly, it was duly warned. warned, published, yeah, sent yeah. to the uh, adjoining yeah. towns, et cetera, et cetera. Et, yeah. Et, 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 et. Thank you, Shannon. Yep. Um, okay, the select board can make minor changes. Mm -hmm. Major changes, they should kick it back to the Planning Commission. This I would make as a minor, minor. So what specific language would you recommend if it's minor, minor? Something that we can do right now? Well, to suggest, tonight, suggest that it be brought into uh, the line with Chapter 117. Okay, but that means somebody's going to have to sit down and do and that the, work. So the we're not select board can do that. It don't have to get it back to the planning yeah, commission for them to do it. But it's not something that we'll do tonight. Okay, make sure you're happy with your verbiage and then do it. So maybe we could um, bring it up again at the next meeting. And who's going to be able to look at the verbiage? Because it just seems to me this is this is the part that stumped us at the last one. Yeah, the, the, the language that we played with takes care of the issue that uh, occurred to us. Mm -hmm. But Pete's raising right. a, a different point now. Right. Um, that also sounds like a legitimate point that ought to be reflected in there somewhere. But frankly, I don't know what that language should be. And I wonder if. Um, 
Pete, would you be willing to sit down with one of us to play around with some language before the next meeting? Yes, sir. Because <laughs> um, I don't think any of us know where to would know where to start. I think we all know what we wanted, what we felt in there uh, on the ability, but that would be a really good one for you to look at, Pete. Seriously. <laughs> well, I mean, it really would. It's, it's a short little paragraph, but you'll get it at the last part of the sentence, and then you can just say, well, we were crazy, and <laughs> leave it alone, and we'll vote next week. Well, I've, I've, next I've, week. I've, I've spent some time with <clears throat> the draft tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally embarrassed by the fact that I didn't realize you'd held you'd held a hearing. Uh, don't worry, it wasn't much of you. Um, Nobody else should. Funny. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, funny. I, I, would, I would ask. I think I would ask that uh, a copy of the draft, as presented by the, the planning commission to the select board, be. This isn't a statute, this isn't anything else. We provided DRB members for their review. They may or they may not. It's, uh, we get into some awful things that uh, we might, that might have been avoided by, with a comma. Uh, now, let me ask you a question. It, it seems that maybe that, maybe in not sharing it with the DRB, we overlooked something that could be a valuable contribution to this. And what if we step back for a moment? We, we're the hearing. we can now make modifications, minor modifications as a board. Um, but give this thing to to Pete without, you know, a time constraint of three days or something like that. Say, so what do you think? And just bring it up for the next board, let the next mm -hmm. board uh, approve it. That, would that make sense? You know, otherwise, what we're doing is rushing yeah, in on something right. that may or may not be the, the best course of action for the town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, everybody having nodded their heads, Shannon, would yeah. you give Pete a clean copy of the, um, yeah. mm -hmm. of the zoning bylaw? Why don't we give it to him with the, the additional language we've talked about here so he can see it in writing? Um, so I need to read this again and see if you guys are okay with it, then we'll add it. Thank you. Add to the end of section 221 on page 12. Any fines imposed under this section may be appealed in writing to the select board within seven business days from the imposition of the fine. The select board shall hear such appeals at a legally warned meeting and after hearing from the appellant and the zoning administrator may at its discretion sustain, reduce, or overturn any recommended fine. Is that okay as language to add to that? Now we'll give the whole thing to Pete. Yeah, we'll give you that, and then you can see what you think. Okay, is that okay with everything? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You and need the, a motion on that? Yeah, and the draft with that language in it, right? Shannon is online on the website? Not with this language, we'll right. be adding this language. I think so, but I don't. Yeah, I, I mean, think you told me, said that to me, but. Okay. But it, it wouldn't have this language on it that we're just adding now. Because we're just deciding. It might that. as, um, because the way I have it right now is in there, but it's underlined, so you know oh, that okay. that's what you need to it. Okay, so you so. just need to to change it on the next to last word where it says in first time, change it to recommended time. Okay, may I have a motion to ask Shannon to do that then? So moved. Have a motion. Is there a second? Got a second on it. Any further discussion? Shannon doesn't want to send a copy of the zoning bylaw as it's posted on the lawn with that recommended language to Pete. Oh, I was to just going to print him a copy. Yeah, that's Development Review okay. Board. You don't need a motion. I'm doing it right now. now. She's, she's well, already printing it. Uh, oh, oh, oh. All right. But it is online. Give it to Pete. Okay. I don't want that motion. The, the motion is to adopt the language we just talked about. Okay. okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed to abstentions. Motion carries unanimously. Okay. May we start our 6.30 meeting now? Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Pete. You guys aren't giving up already. <laughs> We're just starting. We're just starting. Yeah. But we're looking forward to it.
files are online. You can download and read. Okay, thank you for coming. Yes, I figured you guys got off to this far, right here or something. Else, huh? Okay, uh, minutes from our January 15th meeting. I assume everybody's had a chance to look at them. We have a motion to accept the minutes as presented. So moved. Second. A motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Next item of business is the road foreman's and road commissioner's report. I have Todd's written report over here. One, roads. The roads are getting narrow due to all the storms we've had lately. They're seeing a lot more snow next week. The crew has put in a lot of hours and have done an excellent job. I've had Nick working during the big storm to help us keep up. The crew has managed to keep the roads open during all the storms. Two, equipment. All the storms have started to take its toll on the equipment. We've had a lot of repairs on the trucks and wings and the grader. Nortrax was down and fixed a transmission issue on the grader. The 09 Sterling had a defective rim on the right front. The rim split. And when it did, it took out the front hub, so we had to have a new hub put on along with a new rim. The 06 Sterling rear wheel loosened up, and we had to replace both rear wheels. The 06 and 09 Sterlings have been to Twin State for a lot of different repairs as well. At the moment, we have all the equipment running. The very cold temps make it hard mm -hmm. on the wings and plows. We'll be pushing roads back, so we'll see how everything holds up. The guys have done a lot of the repairs in-house as well. Three, bridge number 45. I'm not sure what the issues are with Bridge 45, Hunter Brook, the bridge Renault rebuilt. Mark Pickering has called and said they're concerned about the repairs that were done. I have not had a lot of time to follow up, but I do have a call into him. As soon as I know, I'll email Shannon so she can email the board. Four, new truck. The new truck is getting put together now, and I expect it will be here within the next two to four weeks. The board needs to be thinking about selling the old truck and where to advertise it. Shannon had some ideas that were good. We should also advertise the stainless steel sander that goes in the back as well. We should sell them separate because the sander just had a new conveyor chain and bearings and shafts put in it. It's in very good shape. If you sell it with the truck, you'll not get much for it. If it doesn't sell, the town could keep it for a spare for the new truck. Shannon, what were your ideas about how to do this? Oh, um, the LCT has classifieds that they don't charge for. Um, they don't. In a lot of towns, we'll go through those and look. Um, but there's another one too. Um, Craigslist also, a lot of towns are starting to use that. Um, oh, there's one I just looked at. It's not Auto Trader, but it'll yeah, come to me. Auto Hunter. Um, you know, there's a municipal thing website yeah. too. Yeah. Um, but the state of Vermont is also starting to do some auction type things for towns. So you could do all of them. Should we ask Shannon to go ahead and advertise that truck for sale on yeah. all appropriate sites? Absolutely. For how much? Uh, he, he said the minimum bid should be 10000 Exactly. That's right. Are well, you going to put it up to bids or at a price to sell? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you don't usually bid on them. Yeah. I mean, well, eBay, you plug in, eBay is like a, a bid, bid thing, process, isn't it? But I mean, like you do buying something. Awarded to the highest bidder this time is the lowest, but um, I mean, if I was going to put it up for sale, I'd put it for a higher than 10 grand. Yeah, that's why he said no bids, um, no bids under 10,000, and that didn't account for the sander, right? Either, right. and sander he's saying separate. that separate, right? So, so are you putting it out the bidder for a sale? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. That's if, up to you. If, you, if we were to put it up for sale, what would you recommend? I don't know. I just bought a new one. It cost me 60 grand. You know, so I mean, I'd start out at 20 if I was going to sell it. Can you do a, can you do a Nina and a Kelly on that? The I selling it with a plow. I don't know if I can get into the NADA, but I can try it. Okay. If you do go to the truck portion of that, I think that you should be able to maybe get an idea. I don't know on the sander. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so can we be in a position for the next meeting to make a decision about whether we'd like to put it out for bid or put it up for sale and what the price level should be in either case? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, Shannon, would you make sure we put that on the agenda for yeah. next time? Okay, um, continuing. Number five, Williamsville Hall. When does the board want me to have Jeff Ruff, Jeff Russ come turn the heat back on? There's a lot of snow removal that needs to get done there before town meeting. When we get caught up, 
If we do, we'll take the loader over and clean it up. We should remind Mark Ray that the walkways will need some shoveling and salting before the meeting. Um, normally, what do we do? Two days before the meeting to get the heat turned back on? I think so. Two or three. Yeah. Two or three. Three we, days? We might, make sure we might really want it on. Um, <laughs> yeah, make sure it works. <laughs> Easily Friday before because then you've got a weekend and just one day and it has to be up and going. And what if it doesn't work? Okay, should we ask Jeff to do it on that Friday before February 27th? That makes sense? Yeah. Okay, sounds like that makes sense. So Friday, February 27th. And if you could let Todd know, we'll be good on that. Six winter sand. We'll have to have Fitzpatrick's haul in more sand right off as we're getting very low again. Seven winter budget. I'm not sure where we stand at the moment on the budget, but I'm sure we're very close and probably over on some things already. We had to order plow blades and plow parts the other day, tire chain, salt, sand, overtime, etc. Thank you, Todd Wally. Um, on the winter budget, that's one of those parts of the budget where I think we have to do what we have to do on it. So. Yeah, we don't have nothing we're going to do this year. <laughs> Anybody have any questions on the road form and road commissioner's report? I think we need to um, also, for number five, uh, get something to Mark Gray, not just Todd, and, or about shoveling and getting it sanded. Okay. Um, Shannon, could you contact Mark to take care of that then? <coughs> okay. Thank you. Anything else on this? Presumably. <laughs> I'll make a motion to accept the road foreman's report. Is there a second? Seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Reports accepted unanimously. Treasurer's report. report. Hope everybody's had a chance to take a look at Maureen's email to us of Tuesday, January 20th. I'll just read it for the record. As of the above date, the general fund has $873,003.31. Last week's pay orders of $56,157.36 have been deducted from the general fund. On February 6, 2015, we have to pay another $720,066.25 to the schools. This will be our third installment to education. Also, that same amount to the schools is due May 1st, 2015 for the fourth and final quarter of fiscal year 2015. On May 22nd, 2015, we have to pay the state of Vermont a large payment of $309,922.46 for the second and final payment of our non-residence education tax for fiscal year 2015. It's due June 1st, however, it may go down a little once we get the final education statement from the state. The final closing of packets for the state on flood are complete. However, we're still waiting on the state of Vermont to get back to the administrative assistant and select board. Unfortunately, we have no idea how long that will be. I feel we'll need the state of Vermont money in order to pay that large bill back to the state of Vermont in May. If anyone can tell me what their holdup is, I would appreciate it. It's three and a half years since the flood. Sincerely. Morning now with Piazza. Um, did anybody have any questions related to either Morning's cover letter or any of the, um, the the general fund information that you attended to? Anybody know anything more about where things stand with the state on the flood money? It's later on the agenda, but yeah. Okay, we're, we're going to fit that one. All right, so we'll do that later on the agenda. Um, do you want a motion to accept the treasurer's report? Yes, sir. Do that. So a motion, a second. Do a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. I don't remember ever approving a treasurer's report. We may not have. They never approved it before, <laughs> just ignore it. We just started okay. a trend. I think it's fine. I'm just fine. I'm just fine. Okay, administrative assistance report. Are you going to need a motion to accept the administrative assistance report? I would never <laughs> accept mine. <laughs> okay, it's getting late. You know, I'm just. Poor Doris is going to send me the. Do you want to go in there? Go, you go in there. Are you sure? Do you want to do the administrative assistance report? No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, the town report is done. It's been sent to the printer. We got the proof. 
I think it looks good. It does. does. Um, mailing day target is February 19th, and any select board members that wanted to come and help stick labels on them, love it. Remind me when we get closer. Yeah. Okay. Um, Rutland resolution, Gary has it on the table. Um, and then I think you said there's another yeah. one too. So I just put it in here so we didn't forget. Um, the final audit is complete. Everybody got a hard copy. It was also in, um, finished this time in time to put it in the town report. So the whole thing is in there. Um, the PA system for town meeting, I did order it. Um, unfortunately, it was on back order and may or may not come in by town meeting. Um, but Bauman has graciously offered to let us borrow his for one more year. So we do have all the microphones and stands and wires now. Um, Good lip sync. And where's, and yes. where's, where's that going to be stored? Here. Upstairs. Okay. It, it weighs three pounds. So no, I don't just... think it'll be a problem. <laughs> I don't know. And then again, you never know. You just probably don't want me carrying it up the stairs. <laughs> and then it'll be okay. Um, the truck loan documents are here. They're ready. Um, funding will be here Monday, so whenever the truck is done, we're ready. Um, and then I received a request from Grace Cottage asking for permission to do a health survey at town meeting. Um, that's also in the correspondence box, okay, is the request. Down. Yep. Um, and then I received a call from John Spicer, who is what's left of the Village Tree Committee. <laughs> the last tree standing. <laughs> the last tree standing. Uh, apparently some tree company who was working for Green Mountain Power came along and cut down one of the village trees. And um, so he was wondering, had the select board heard anything about it? And no, we hadn't. Um, the landowner had signed a permission, but didn't believe that that tree was included in what he signed. So Village Trees is drafting a letter to Green Mountain Power, and they're going to try to get a new tree. So, that big I hope. <laughs> yeah, so if I hear anything new, I'll keep you updated. And I'm attaching a report of activities that have been occurring in the select board office, but I only started in on Tuesday. So um, if you have questions, just let me know. That's nice. He doesn't do anything. I just yeah. No, I mean that's really handy. She it is, but I'll tell you, it's very time consuming. I see that. I see that. <laughs> oh, I forgot to write it down. So, but this is as a result of that request we. Yeah. So how often does it make sense to ask the administrative assistant to put this together? A quarter we do it. Or not more frequently. Uh, okay. Good point. See, for example, this one. To, for me as a board member, as I was the last on the last two years, the last item, Dave Olson confirmed loan docs will be ready for 2-5. Those would be important things for the board to know. So how often? A lot. I mean, some of the stuff. Well, it not. would be, except, well, not really, because it's on the agenda, so you know it's coming. Yeah. Um, now, he had completely forgotten to do it, and it was me remembering and calling him that, yeah, made that happen, but that's what I'm here for. Well, you know, probably if there's something of immediate moment, mm -hmm. um, Shannon can include it in her regular age report, report right. for the board. I mean, I can do this every meeting. I mean, you know what I mean? It's it's well, all in how much you really want to know because I put some pretty mundane things in there. Yeah, I I think it's helpful to you know it just. To know what's going on, but I think something quarterly would probably take care of it rather than asking for something for every meeting. Or for every day. Or for I mean, that's, no, that, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If I do this for every right. single task I do every day, no, you know, yeah. you're going to be spending your days. <laughs> and, and I think what, what we were talking about was just, you know, what are the things that you're doing behind the scenes that would be good for us to know about? Right. right. So, you know, if you, if you talk to Chris Drew for two hours on February 5th, 
Unless something important It was. Out. It was over two hours. We were running some <laughs> Emmy. We were reviewing FEMA but, stuff. But, but, but those are big block things. And, yeah. you know, you spend but I mean, if it's something that the yeah, board should yeah. be aware of, then include it. If it's, yeah. if it's not, you know. Yeah. Someone called you to ask if the parking lot was plowed no, this I'm morning. No, I'm telling you that. Yeah, but I don't know if that's something the board really has <laughs> to know. No, you know. Unless it's an issue. I went out and put down the salt on the, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's all I got. Okay, anybody have any questions for Shannon? Okay, let, let's deal with them. Um, no, thank, uh, thank you for yeah. this. does look great. Let's deal quickly with two of the things you brought up so that we don't forget about them. One, the truck line. This mm -hmm. is the document. Yeah. Okay. So what this is, Town of failure received unconditional promises to pay an awful money to the United, of the United States People's United Bank, $80,000. Okay, may I have a motion that we sign I'm the truck line? Second. Got okay, a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries unanimously. I'll pass this around. There are three places for us to be signing, it looks like. Second part is the resolution on capital equipment for anyone. And the third part is the non arbitrage certificate. Non arbitrage certificate. We, the children, at least the majority of the board of selectmen, hereby certify and represent as follows. We have respect for the $80,000 issue is issued and delivered in the simultaneously with the delivery of the certificate. The officers of the issue are charged by law with responsibility for issuing the note, and the scheme is purpose. Get, yeah, you sign it, you're on it. That's, that's the best way I can say it. That's, that's so quickly. <laughs> okay, um, let's quickly do the Rutland resolution, then I think we can go on to Jaris's issue. Oh, okay. this, almost. This is a two part deal. We got a letter from Rutland that was sent to all the select boards in the state, I guess. <clears throat> Greetings and Happy New Year from the Rutland Town Select Board. Enclosed, you'll find a resolution drafted by our board, which is being sent to every municipality in Vermont. We're attempting through this resolution to form a coalition of Vermont communities, which will support reasonable legislation to restore local community input through the regulatory process when addressing the issue of solar siding in our state. Our community has spent countless hours during the whole year-long process to develop a document called Solar Siding Standards which was then adopted by our planning commission as an amendment to our town plan. This document was a thoughtful representation of our community's support for solar development and outlined our town's plan for its reasonable integration into the landscape of our community. The document and therefore our town's plan for such development was virtually ignored by the regulatory process. This is not what we feel the state intended when encouraging and supporting the entire deliberative planning process in our state which has served us all so well for decades. Our board, indeed our citizens, are not opposed to renewable energy, including solar development. We view the enclosed resolution as a positive step in the introduction of bipartisan legislation that will allow local community leaders such as yours legitimate input for the solar siding process and standards. You may show your support for this resolution by simply signing the document at the bottom end or indicating a date of a board vote to do so and returning same to Rutland Town Select Board. Our intent is that legislation be introduced in both the House and Senate at the earliest date possible. Thank you in advance for joining other Vermont communities in our attempt to give meaningful input to our citizenry. And we wish you the best in your valuable service to your community. Part one. Part two came from the um, Renewable Energy Vermont, dated January 30th. Dear Select Board Chair, we understand the town of Rutland has circulated a letter and resolution regarding the renewable energy siting process under Section 248. On behalf of hundreds of businesses throughout the state and the majority of Vermonters who support renewable energy, we respectfully urge you not to sign this misguided resolution. 
As you're likely aware, polling demonstrates that 90% of Vermonters agree that changing our energy system from traditional fossil nuclear fuels, nuclear fuels to local renewables is necessary and important. Renewable Energy Vermont believes it can and is being done responsibly with community support. We're committed to supporting the responsible siting and permitting of renewable energy projects from St. Albans to Brattleboro and Middlebury to St. John's where clean energy projects are being welcomed by communities and their governing select boards. The Public Service Board site review and evaluation process weighs input from neighbors, local municipalities, and our state community goals of clean, reliable power supplies that encourage economic growth and employment to strengthen Vermont's communities. The process weighs multiple considerations from energy needs to environmental considerations from wetland protection to agricultural use and aesthetics. PSD has developed a document, Citizens Guide to the Vermont Public Service Board, Section 248 process, specifically to assist each and every Vermonter to participate in the formal process. This is available on the Public Service Board website. <coughs> the Rutland Resolution unwisely singles out Vermont's renewable energy economy, resulting in the promotion of only fossil fuel generating resources and associated facilities. It ignores the other Section 248 permitted uses, including gas lines and transmission projects. The resolution would increase delays and costs of deploying clean renewable energy projects across Vermont, impacting the community's renewable energy jobs, and potentially jeopardizing Vermont's re energy reliability and electric rates. As we hope you're aware, local renewable energy projects of all sizes are routinely permitted with input and support from municipalities across the state. The projects provide clean local energy to homes, and businesses, local property tax revenue without demanding municipal services, including schools or transportation, and employ hardworking Vermonters in every one of our communities. Again, as an industry, we're committed to the siting and permitting of responsible projects that are welcomed by our communities. We urge you not to sign onto this poorly targeted resolution. Thank you for your consideration. The Renewable Energy Vermont sounds like an, an industry um, lobbying group that's um, supporting the program the way it exists now. Rutland seems to be saying they're not objecting to um, solar energy. They just want to have some input into the, the process. And they're asking us to um, think about, is this something we should share with the Planning Commission and ask them to give us a recommendation on? Does that make it sort sense? of sounds to me like the same thing with the cell towers. We have an ordinance, and then all of a sudden we find out, oh, it doesn't make the difference you have an ordinance. You don't have any control. Did, am I hearing that right? That that was the impression I got. Yeah, so, okay. But it's, I would let the Planning Commission get rid of them. Okay, so I'm going to give this to you to give to the Planning Commission and back to us. Because we did talk, or I did anyway, when we discussing the town plan as to why there wasn't anything, you know, solar power and that kind of thing, and it's because you know, they, they hadn't looked at that. So that would be a good thing. Okay. Um, you've got the AA's report, or scheduled members of the public, non unscheduled members of the public. Senior, Pete. Okay. okay. New business. Can I just um, excuse myself? As town clerk, um, What's the select board's pleasure in terms of, um, should I get everything out of the office in case I'm not town clerk? You know, all my furniture prior to, or if I do not win um, the election, would it be okay to get all of my furniture out on Saturday? It occurs to me that I won't have to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, you know, that's the, last, last a, year it was wait and see. But. As a practical matter, you're the town clerk until the election yeah. Yeah. is tanked yeah. up in any event. Uh, it seems to me that Saturday would probably be fine if that's the case. Okay. Just, just think that because I didn't want to really take my plan out. Dispossess Gloria before the election? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's still coming to work. Okay. All righty, um, new business, reappraisal contract bid already awarded. DK, what you got? Thank you for sticking around. Oh, thank um, you. Oh, it's at 7.15 on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so make it for quick. A little right on. <laughs> um, you have all been given a copy of the contract for signing. 
And uh, I'm here if you have any questions. The amount that you awarded was $115,000 for the reappraisal. We have currently at the end of December $123,130. of so those. you have a, like $8,000. You'll be getting more money from the state uh, the next couple of years, 11000 about eleven thousand three hundred dollars. That's like the eight fifty a parcel that you get, plus there's some interest money. Uh, we will need to buy. The town will be responsible for buying um, the computer, and they'll let us know um, the specifications and so forth that we would need for the program, and so that it's sizable enough for all the information and so forth. The project will begin in July of um, 2015 this year. They'll be collecting data. Um, the property listings will be nearly, which tells you in this thing here, if you read it. Um, the property listings will be done in the fall, and then, then they'll do a booklet. You know the booklet mm -hmm. that you get that everybody loves to look at. <laughs> Uh, there will be preliminary hearings, which um, they will conduct through uh, mid-May. And then by June 4th, which is a date set by the state, the um, numbers, then the listers will be responsible for sending out the notice of grievance and change in appraisal. But they do a preliminary one beforehand, which is really helpful because it gets rid of a lot of the people that just are inquisitive about what's mm -hmm. going on and so forth. Um, and then they'll, and this won't be completed until uh, April 1st of 2017 will be the, that's another date set by the state that we have to have our appraisals done. And then we send out notices in June, and then the, at the end of, uh, yeah, the, after grievance, then it's the Board of Civil Authority. Tax, they will tax assist, will, they will assist with um, our grievance and the Board of Civil Authority. If it goes beyond that to the state, if we want their assistance, and it says in here it's like $650 for, I don't know, but usually we can handle that. So when will the new, appra new appraisals go into effect then? For um, April 1st, 2017? No, the, you just no, no, that's when we have to be the, done. For the, the, we, have the, we have to appraise by April 1st. Okay. Then people can come and grieve so that, that your actual grand list isn't completed until the, uh, it'll, the tax thing will be July Tax year for that reappraisal will be July 1st, 2017. Okay. But they start collecting data and so okay. forth. Okay. They got to do a sales study. All the stuff is explained yeah. in here. But I thought I'd tell you a few minutes. They're responsible for printing and sending out that um, booklet. They give us some training. They have to do a sales survey. And what happens is after this gets signed too, this, we send this copy to the state so they know what mm. is going on. Okay. And um, we have to send them some other information with it to the state. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Doris about this? We already approved the amounts. We yeah. have a motion to go ahead and sign the contract for services with New England Municipal Consultants Limited. So moved. Seconded. Motion. Go a second. And Further discussion? We need to add the date on the Do we want to sign it without Todd being here too? Or? Yes, you can. Sure. Can we're a majority? You, need a you got a majority of the board. Yeah, no, I just didn't know it might be. No. All five of us would be better to have the signatures on it. No. I know what we can do. I was just saying that it would be the right thing. Um, yeah, it is. So well, we can do whatever. We can ask um, Janet to let Todd know and he's got so, he can step in tomorrow. He wasn't here. Hmm? He, he wasn't here. He so. wasn't here. Yeah, he can't sign I mean, there's... Can't sign it? It's, it's the same way that right. you weren't here for the warning, so you couldn't sign it. But I signed the warning the next day or something. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Really? Oh. Didn't I sign a warning, Sharon? The motion is made anyway. yeah. to sign it, yeah, and it's for the members that are here. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody have any problems it? with us just in the, the four of us as part of the discussion? If not, okay. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? All opposed. Opposed? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I oppose. Uh, so I have to vote then, huh? Why? Well, why? I just thought it would be better if everybody signed it in, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I mean, what's the big rush today or next week even? Because we've got to get the contract to the... We've got to get this information and up to the state in this board who approved the, who already approved the RFP. Mm -hmm. Let's just sign it. Full board approved the RFP. You're just signing the contract. Mm -hmm. I just thought it looked, would have looked better if something like that going out you know, for everybody to sign it. But what? Doesn't matter. Anyway, Gary, when do we have to get it up to the state? I would like you to sign it tonight, please. But when do we have to get it to the state? It could have been uh, a month ago. Could have been or should have been? Probably should have been. Thanks. <laughs> now, I mean, Gary, seriously, what, what's the problem if we wait until Todd signs it if Mike's happy about it? I mean, if it's a problem, I'll vote for it. If it's I not really, a problem, then... I've been here. I, came, I was on the agenda for 7.15. Yeah. I've been waiting since that time. This is an important thing that needs to get taken care of. It, it should have, I would like to have had it done in December, January. Here it is, the first meeting in February. I want, it was urgent because this board is the one that approved the RFP. And you approved the RFP back in October, November. October, yeah. Now, I don't think anybody's challenging any of that. I think it's just I the think question of whether, if, if it's something that has to be out tonight, I'm going to vote yes. If it's something where it doesn't matter, I'm going to be tonight, calling, now, tomorrow, I, what difference now Bill Podeski was going to be here tonight yeah. and said, well, maybe if the listers can take care of it. And as you can see who the, the lister is, right? And if I had told him to come at 7.15, what would you have done? I'm asking, yeah. what would you have yeah. done? Um, let, I would have told him to question. come here at 7.15. Let me ask you the question, answer the question, Doris. I think that the, the time tonight is absolutely irrelevant to this. All I'm asking is one specific question. Is there a problem if we don't sign it before Todd can sign it, as long as it's still this board that does it? Are we missing a deadline, or is it just something that's preferable? But, that's all I'm asking. Yeah, but Todd's not here for this discussion, and so, so the motion. If, if we didn't have do to this until it. the next meeting, is there is there an issue with it? That's all I'm asking. There yeah. is for me, and the other listers, and for Bill Podesky. There's a possibility we'll be missing two members next week. Yeah. Get her done. You know, it's on the agenda. There's no reason why you can't get it done. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll vote for it so that we can get it done, although I frankly do not understand what the, um, what the rush is on the thing. So because the motion should have, carries... It, it should have been done already. Motion carries. Yeah, but that's the first time we've seen it tonight, right? The contract. No, 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 no. No, no man, to be signed? To be signed. Just, well... But we I don't care. He, he voted for it. Let's sign it up. Yeah. All I just said, I thought it would look better if all five of us had been on the damn thing, but I don't really get a shirt. Okay, other so things that you need to sign if you don't have all five board members here. Most the, the, the motion was carried. We're going to sign the thing. Good. Okay, so the motion carries three to one, Shannon. Thank you all very much. Well, no better to keep you out late next time. Doris. You yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm Tam Road and Bridge Town. Excuse me, there's another thing that the, for the listeners on there, and I'd like you to take care of it and not wait okay. until the end. What is it? A certificate no of no appeal or suit pending. Yeah. It says okay. sweet, but I should have said sweet. Sorry. Oh, it does say sweet. Yeah, it does sweet. There's no sweets pending either. 
What that is, is we have to do that every year. Yeah. Do you have that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have to do that every year as required by the state. And the last person who um, appealed to the state, it was for the 2013 um, assessment. And that finding was settled in 2014. There is no new suit right. pending. Okay, so what we're saying on that is we certify that on this date there are not any appeals pending from action of listers nor suits pending to recover taxes paid under protests relating to the April 1st, which which year? Around this 2013. Don't you have that? Oh. April 1st, 2013. No, no, no. It's, no. it's blank on here. April oh. 1st, what year do I need to put in? What does it say? 2000? It doesn't. It's blank. It's all blank. What did I think I saw? It was another. Well, it, this is just well, for me. Grand list 2014. Yeah. Two th we don't have a 2015. So April 1st, 2014. Correct. Right. Okay, right. thank you. Two, oh, one, four. Grand mm -hmm. list of new things. I make a motion to uh, sign the certificate of no appeal or suit pending to the listers. Seconded. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? <laughs> you okay, Mike? Thank yeah. you. Okay. Uh, motion carries unanimously. <laughs> sign on the right. And uh, there's it. Yeah, you better. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. And Which Shannon, you? will you fill in the blanks on this form for us later? <laughs> All right, the next one is certification of compliance for town road and bridge standards. So we're done with the list. Thank right? you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for keeping you up. Okay. You're welcome. I do it anyway. I don't know. I did it. Okay. Town road and bridge standards certificate certification of compliance. New legislative body of the municipality of Newfane certified that we've reviewed, understand, and comply with the town road and bridge standards. Public work specifications and standards passed and adopted by the select board on February 7, 2013. We further certify that our adopted standards do meet or exceed the minimum requirements, including the January 23, 2013 VTRANS template. I have a motion to approve the certification of compliance for town road and bridge standards. Is there a second? Got a second? Yeah. Further discussion? All in favor, please uh, say I'm, uh, I'm just curious. <coughs> How do we know that? Because Todd tells us that all the time. No, okay. I'm, just, I'm just saying. Uh, so we, Todd has said that this is in compliance? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That, I mean, it's like I'm just and signing something. I haven't asked him in the last right? two days. But yeah. That's the way it's normally worked. Okay. Oh, I know, but I, Would you prefer to Does Shannon also know this? Well, uh, I, that our, our, that our uh, road and bridge standards are yes, in compliant? Yes, they are. They're actually better than just compliant. Okay, okay so we got it from two sources. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries unanimously. Oops. Okay. Here you go, Mike. B Annual Highway Financial Plan. Okay, this thing is the annual financial plan, town highways, town of Newfane for fiscal year 2015. Uh, and what it shows is um, the amounts estimated for expenditure on place two and three roads, tax funds involved, capital funds for bridges, capital for highway maintenance, capital for highway equipment. Total of $797,591. Um, that's, that's the income. The expenses, um, winter maintenance, non-winter maintenance, and paving over road come to the same total, $797,591. The, the breakdown on that is $361,773 for winter maintenance, $320,818 for non-winter maintenance, $115,000 for paving over road. 
We, the legislative body of the municipality of Mufan, certify that funds raised by municipal taxes are equivalent to or greater than a sum of at least $300 per mile for each mile of class one, two, and three town highway in the municipality. Is there a motion to approve this? I make a motion to approve uh, the Beach Pans Annual Highway Financial Plan. Is there a second? Second. We've got a motion and a second. Further discussion? Out of curiosity, how much are the Dover roads going to be paid? Do you remember mm -hmm. offhand? How much is going to be paid? Yeah. How much was paid? Yeah. Oh, another mile. Another mile. Another mile. Thank you. <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, um, certificate of no appeal if you can we did. Okay. Is there any other new business that we should be dealing with? Okay, old business, the zoning bylaw we've um, taken care of to some extent. Capital policy, are we prepared to vote on the capital policy this time? I honestly did not forget that. I did, but it's been a few days. I'm going to put it off until next time. Sounds good. Okay, Shannon, will you please put capital policy on the list for next time? And, and maybe, is that something that you could just send me again by email? As the biggest. Okay. Um, Personal policy and conflict of interest policy. Uh, Chris, you want to share with us the conversations with um, the LCT? Okay. On your last meeting. <clears throat> so, the LCT shared that they would be willing to give us an estimate to for a review of the conflict of interest policy for the town to make sure that it's updated and that it's um, the ability to be able to use a conflict interest policy is adequate. Um, likewise, on the personnel policy, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Shannon, I thought we voted to have that personnel policy reviewed by the town attorney or by the attorney? Yes, I have an appointment tomorrow okay. with him to review it. Okay. Um, you did both, the conflict of interest and the personal. Right. Case. So I'm bringing those down tomorrow. Okay. And meeting with them. And the purpose of that, just so I mean, the public understands what's happening here, the personnel policy. Um, one of the issues that we're we're seeing, BLCT has said this numerous times. There's no ability for the benefits or anything that's happening for the town officials who are elected. There's, they're not on the same plane as, as um, the um, hired or employee. And that it creates a problem because there's no, um, you're, you're providing things, but you don't have any ability to control it. And there is a disconnect with that that, that uh, really does need to be reviewed. Um, so I think that that's something that needs to be managed by VLCT and or the attorney to be able to say, here's what we recommend the town do to handle this. So giving a chance talking to the attorney about both these things tomorrow, um, would it make sense to hear what the attorney has to say before we make a decision about whether to engage VLCT to do it, or is there value in doing that in any way? I, I think that it would be smart to have the attorney. I mean, uh, don't you? Yeah, there's no point in doing if both. He says, if he says, no. well, Forget exactly. It. We don't know what he's going to say. So, um, the only thing that I think we wanted to say before the board is VLCT also says, look, you know, you do need a review of these. You know, all I mean, there's a lot of towns that are doing the same exact mm -hmm. thing, so they're well aware of it and um, are happy to do it. You know, happy to come down here. Um, and individually talk with the towns. That's something that I don't think mm -hmm. this town is utilized very well. 
is that capability so that if there's problems, you know, we can get outside resources to give us additional information. Um, now you said they gave you an estimate? What would happen is, um, what you do with DLCT you is you say, yeah, what they do is you send the conflict. I actually think Shannon may have sent it I to did DLCT. Send them and they came back with a price of $90 an hour, I think. Yeah, I think it's like $90 an hour, so it's less than an attorney probably, maybe. Yeah. Probably about 110 at least. Yeah, and usually what they do is they look the, the conflict of interest policy over, if the board approves it, they will say, look, you know, based on kind of what we see here, we're going to estimate uh, we'd like to spend three or four hours with this. So they kind of yeah. try to tie it in as much as they can. So that's the idea. Okay, so it sounds like the, the notion would be that we see what the attorney has to say and at the next meeting we'd be making a decision about engaging VLCT to take a look at these as well. If it's, if, yes, if, it's, if we think we need to do that, yeah. To do that. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, so what would be happening at the next meeting, if, let's just assume for the moment that we decide we, we do think it's valuable to have VLC to look at, we'd basically be um, making a, a gift to the next board, which would be the one receiving the whatever value there is in VLCT's time. Um, the next board could also just turn around and say, we don't think it's necessary. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Just so everybody understands that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to see what the attorney says, and then based on that, we'll try to decide next week right. or next meeting what kind of thing we should do. And, okay. and, and this is going to come out of the um, select board's legal counsel mm -hmm. fees line item. Okay. Um, um, and we start well, in it. Well, I don't know. Is that yeah. is that a legal review from the LCT? No, I know. I know the Shannon's talking to the lawyer. Oh yeah, that'll not come. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, you know the other thing. It's uh, um, typically boards meet every single year. It changes, and they kind of go, "Hey, there's the policy." And what we didn't realize is the length of time that these have been you know, 10, 15 years and things are changing. So some these really need to be looked at oh, periodically. I, 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 I mean, we, we did the policy. Exactly. Now, Very is the necessary. auditor saying you have to do well, these things? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've seen that for years and we just don't know. Okay, so Sharon, would you make sure the personal and conflict of interest policy are for the next meeting as well? In the um, before we leave that, I wanted to offer a notion to the board to see if um, you thought there'd be any value in it or not. On our current conflict of interest policy, it occurred to me that um, there was something we could do to avoid potential conflicts of interest um, with with an addition. That's that. Let's say that um, next year's board, um, somebody decides to resign before the year is over. Um, and it's up to the board to appoint someone to fill out the remainder of that year of the term. What I think would be valuable to the board would be to have something like this added to the current person, to the current conflict of interest policy. In appointing a person to fill any vacancy on the select board to avoid any possible conflicts of interest, the remaining select board members shall not appoint any person currently holding another elected or appointed position in the town of Newfane. This is consistent with what had been in the original charter thing. It's consistent with what the, um, the state's attorney's office said would make sense to do in a conflict of interest policy rather than in that. So I wanted to just bring that up to you guys to see what you thought. If you would agree, I would ask Shannon to add this to the draft of the conflict of interest policy that we share with the attorney and VLCT so that we're, we're getting the benefit of the review on this type of provision as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, sure. We're going to have, you're going to meet with them tomorrow? Uh-huh. Yeah, let it, let, let them yeah, review yeah, it. Them look at it yeah. Absolutely. But, but we're not, we can't change any of this. I, I mean, mean, we're just putting it in as a suggestion for them to review. Right. We're, not, we're not incorporating it right now. No. Well, since we're no. getting a review anyway. Yeah. I, 
I, I see what you mean. But, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. What, what I would suggest is if, if the attorney comes back and says there's nothing wrong with this, then I would like for us to consider at the next meeting actually amending the conflict of interest policy so that the new board when it's coming in sees the version that essentially looks okay to the attorney. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, let's okay. let him take it under review and then we can put it on the agenda for next meeting, right? Okay. Okay, that sound okay to everybody? Okay, Shannon, I'll leave that on the table over here. Pete's going to stand up. Sorry? Mr. Chairman, if yes, I may. Sir. I would disagree with that. Okay. I think the town needs as much talent as it can get its hands on. And I would hope the talent would have sense enough to get out of the way when I probably get out of the way. Thank you. I would hope so. Hmm? I would hope so. This, well, let's see what they say. I mean, if they, um, yeah, it's if a, they think that it's too winning, then we got it. Okay. Anything else on personal policy or conflict of interest policy? Okay. Zoning violations follow up. We're done. Um, FEMA closeouts. Anything new on that? Yes. We, uh, what was the date we did that, Shannon? I know you wrote it in your little list here. Um, we, Shannon and I both met with um, 22nd, isn't it? the, the uh, state. Yeah, it was a charter. And um, we have actually sent all but the final, we have one bit of uh, left to do on a Hunter Brook permanent for all the um, drawings and copies and so on to get those PDF into the file. All the, all the flood is, some of it is actually closed out and some is being processed as we speak, such as Lynch Bridge, Hunter Brook temporary, Hunter Brook permanent, South Wadsboro, and I'll bring up Adams Hill. Adams Hill has been the big bugaboo on for me personally. Adams Hill, we found out, as actually was closed out by mm -hmm. FEMA in August of 2012. So um, we re entirely reviewed that file. And both Shannon and I agree, it doesn't make any sense to try and reopen that file. We will take a loss. It's less of a loss than what we originally thought. Um, and it would probably be to our detriment if we go and play with that after three years. So, so we've, we've left that. So they might come back and say, uh-huh, so you, okay, now we're gonna look at this. And they might take they actually would because there was some hazard mitigation that was brought into that that I wasn't even aware of until we really got into the file. So we wouldn't prevail very well. So basically, I'm trying to explain this simply, um, they closed it out, down and dirty, um, where we didn't have some coverage and they kind of took it away from us, they gave it back internally in the file with some hazard mitigation money. And that's how they decided to settle it and that's where they're going to hold their feet is basically how it goes. Um, actually, overall, with the exception, I think, of Lynch Bridge, we've actually gotten the majority of monies in except for the final closeouts where the state would give us the differential of 2%. So. Do we have any guesstimate of how much money should be coming? Shannon and I, that's why we were talking today. That's what we're actually going to do the final um, part to try to give you some pretty accurate figures on every single project <coughs> where we were net high or low. Um, and I think that would answer Maureen's. The part that we can't answer for Maureen is exactly what she says. How long do you think they're going to take? Wow, I. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Although we were looking at one of the files today, and it's already a closed-out process, so you know, it's not like they're really dawdling. It just I can't tell you in terms yeah, so of nobody can. But the final. But if I'd be curious about, you know, is it another million dollars coming back, or are we down no, to no, because the, or <laughs> no, the state um, has been really good. I think. I mean, they're trying to 
bring the money in. We do have um, Green Iron Bridge. We're gonna we're gonna look at that one because that's a problem. Um, it's not a significant problem, but um, I would say uh, if I were to make a guess, I would say within 90 days we're gonna have a pretty good idea of where we stand all the way around. You know? Do you have anything that you want to add to that, Shannon? That I'm not. Um, no. I don't think that the amount of money that we're going to see now is going to be a huge right. life-saving amount of money. We're right. talking little percentages of projects that are closed out yeah. that they go, oh, well, we still, you know, we have to make up that 2 to 3%. And yeah. It, it, it's not going to be... Um, so that's really not, you know, if, if everything came in, you know, Maureen is saying we, we need that state money to pay the huge amount right. to the state. What I think is going to have to happen is you're going to have to take whatever that loss is and just deal with that number. And that's what I was saying to you earlier, yes. Chris, is if, it's, if we're at a loss of $250,000, you're just going to have to take that loss and, you know, seek advice from the auditors, seek advice from VLCT. Do you go to the voters with it right. and see if they want to do a long-term loan mm -hmm. or whatever mechanism there is to, you know, get through Move that. Move it out. But yeah. So is there a realistic expectation that when all is said and done, the um, reimbursement from FEMA and the state will, can fall a quarter of a million dollars short of what the flood actually cost us? Oh sure. I mean, because you I'm you've got it's more like four, you've got four automatically when when uh, on John Max board, I, I think basically what John and I and, and everybody concurred is you're looking at our our look was at four hundred thousand. Yeah. I think we're gonna come just shy of what we really knew. Here's the deal. Even though the state came in and said we're, because of your severe damage, you're at um, what is it the two or three percent range there. Mm -hmm. Um, still, when you're looking at that much money, that percentage is where you're at. So we already knew that. I don't think we're going to come out anything above what we've already known for two years. By in fact, we'll probably come out slightly less. I think we've yeah. kind of come to that conclusion. So we kind of guesstimated about four hundred. Yeah, and so Which yeah, when you consider a town with the flood damage we had exactly. Uh, and remember, part of it was, part of where we took the hit was, there were certain things that the state of Vermont had for rules and regulations mm -hmm. that FEMA simply didn't accept. You saw this in towns in Jamaica and so on. Um, and we had to comply as we went along, and, and we did. And I think there is right in each one of these um, sections that we were dealing with, that, that's a, a good part of the pieces that we were, were picking up right there. So it's not that it's ever been unknown. The biggest worry was whether we were going to get hammered any any harder than that was what we were worried about. So we're definitely not. We're going to come in under the expectation or the threshold that we set two years ago, I guess it was. You know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else on the uh, FEMA closets that we need to be discussing? Any okay. other? Mr. Chair, what if I very quickly buddy in again. Should the recommendation relative to that until be formalized in the motion for so it would go on the record? Um that's a good question. Are we prepared to do that now or do we wanna wait till maybe you wanna chew on it and really think about I'd like to get the rest of those figures together even like she said they wanna see it. I mean, I think we could have that for the next meeting. Yeah, I do. Okay, um, so let's make sure we put that on the agenda yeah. for the next meeting as well. That's a good yeah. point, though. I, I just, we just want to wrap up the rest of the, you know, every little detail. I mean, what isn't worth it to you and I might seem worth it to other members. I that's right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, any other old business that should be taken care of? 
Unfinished business. What's the difference between unfinished business and old business and new business? Unfinished is sort of like, what, how do we explain it once it, like a parking lot, parking lot. things that aren't really moving, oh, okay. but we don't want to forget about them. You, you explained that to me before. Okay, thanks. Oh, have I? Yeah. Okay, well. For and example, it was the Rock River Shack that we kept up there until oh, yeah. we okay. finally got it. Okay. All right, we're up to correspondence. We have a... Um, Email from Jasmine Burgess, our animal control officer. Hi, Shannon. I decided to make reports for any incidents I encounter. Um, animal control incident report form. Missing dog. Um, this is a very detailed report about the missing dog incident. The next one was... Um, It doesn't say what the nature of the incident was, but it involved a shy but friendly dog. Received a call from a concerned citizen about a beagle running loose in his area. And someone let the dog in and call me, went to his residence, picked up the beagle, which was the other lost dog. So that's yeah, one time we had two calls on beagles. Okay. Um, Next item, this is the thing that um, Gloria had made reference to before the health needs survey at town meeting. Um, Grace College Hospital is currently conducting a community health needs assessment in collaboration with Brattleboro Memorial Hospital and the Brattleboro Retreat. Goal is to identify the most significant health issues facing our community as well as any barriers to healthy living in our community. The survey is very important and will be used for planning at our three organizations. We'd like to have a volunteer attend town meeting in Newfane. The volunteer would set out the surveys with the other available handouts and then collect them at the end of town meeting. Possible to be great if our volunteer could make a quick announcement inviting people to complete the survey if interested. I just want to touch base and be sure this would be okay with you. If you could please send me an email and let me know that would be great. Thanks so much, Sheila Sherman. Um, what does the board think? That was a good idea. Yeah, I think we had Valley Thrives last year. I think it's a good idea. Okay. So, um, Shane, can you send me an email saying the board's fine with that? Um, have, what do we need to do to make sure that someone can actually make some comments about it? Is it? I think that goes through Deb. Through Deb as the moderator? And she, I, I'll just CC her on the mm -hmm. email so she knows. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and the last piece we have here um, to State of Vermont Town Select Board from Michelle Wilson, Operations Chief Property Evaluation and Review. The annual report based on the 2014 grand list data. PVR is available online at the, at the night, as of January 15, 2015. In an effort to reduce costs, will not be mailing booklets this year. The report contains important statewide information regarding property values and taxes for the 2014 tax year. You may download a full version or parts of the report <coughs> relevant to your community along with additional reports not including the filed report. Reports from 2002 to present are also available at the bottom of the web page. Select the year you wish to view. Please share this information with your listeners and your municipal clerks. If you have any questions, um, give us a call. So Shannon, would you share this with the listeners if they had They actually answer? shared it with me. Okay, yeah. and you've already seen it as town clerk? Yeah. Okay. Is there any other correspondence of anybody's work? Okay. Thank you very much. I think we're up to pay Well, okay.